Thanks for joining us. We now are back with tornado warning coverage now centered on Christian County. A tornado warning now just issued. This is going to be for Christian County here. Uh, there's a very small section of Sangamon County, but that's not a concern now. We have reason to believe there is a tornado uh, down, if not very close to being down, just east of San Chris Lake on the north side of Kincaid there. This storm will be crossing Illinois 29 between Edinburgh and Taylorville and eventually uh, Illinois 48 from Stonington to Taylorville. Uh, Taylorville right now downtown to the south is okay, but if you're on the north side, of Taylorville towards the high school uh, up north. Uh, that's where this storm is heading right through the heart of Christian County as this tornado warning now just issued will go in effect here for uh, a little while longer. This storm may have already produced a tornado uh, possibly in the Sangamon County. Some initial early reports of a brief touchdown. The National Weather Service is looking into that, but it's very obvious to me right here about two miles north of Kincaid, uh, a possible tornado ongoing at this time moving to the east. The strongest circulation, strongest signature that we've had here uh, during the day. As we look area wide real fast, first off, this is where the cluster of storms we're watching is most impressive here. Uh, a lot of large hail coming from northern Christian County. That hail could be golf ball size or larger potentially. Seth is in here and we'll talk about that in a second. I also want to mention uh, my mom and dad are in the Pawnee area and then Kevin Lighty is in the uh, Edinburgh area as well. And so we will get information from them as the storm moves to the east. Let's talk about who's in and who's out. First off, I know the warning here we zoom in. You technically see a, a small part of Sangamon County. Sangamon County all clear at this point from this storm. This is a Christian County problem. If you're watching to the south and west of Taylorville, south and east of Taylorville, uh, you're okay. Mount Auburn, some heavy rain coming your way. You're okay there. Edinburgh, go ahead and shelter. The north side of Taylorville, uh, we'll go ahead and keep an eye there on um, Taylorville north to Stonington, right in between there and uh, then towards Mawiko and Assumption, eventually heading towards US 51 in that direction. As I zoom in here, I want to talk about what we see. First off, this is the hook of the storm right here. Illinois 104, the power plant for, for St. Chris Lake sits right in here. They just moved over St. Chris Lake and uh, some of the, the uh, campgrounds there. Now moving east from that. Remember, radar gives us a scan and it will move forward a little bit. By now, it's probably getting a little closer to Sharpsburg there on Illinois 29. If we flip over to the velocity, here it is. Uh, that's a strong couplet there. Those greens and reds coming together, signs of a tornado or one imminent with this particular storm. And as we look here, uh, it does appear that uh, I don't see anything definitive, but what I do see is that there's a boundary that's being pulled into the storm, but I don't see debris on it yet at this point. I think I heard Kevin. If we can put him on story wall left for me just so I can see where he is, uh, that'd be helpful. Great concern now for Kincaid North, Sharpsburg. Uh, looks like we're okay, Pawnee. Tovey, give us a little bit of time here to get it past you. Edinburgh should be south, but I tell you what, Edinburgh, go ahead and shelter for me anyways. Uh, there's a strong circulation that has possibly uh, produced already a tornado in the new city area. It continues off to the east, and so that's something that we'll be keeping an eye on. Real quick, uh, Seth, you've got some hail information. I'm going to have you over at the quad, and if you could just give us a little update on the hail core. There may be some big hail from this here, uh, so Seth's going to get that for us in a second. Not seeing anything else really concerning besides this storm. There is going to be some storms coming towards Effingham. Severe thunderstorm warning for Fayette County down there. That will continue up I-70. Uh, the concern now with this tornado warning in Christian County, which we will watch closely. This storm likely has some, um, some large hail, and it may very well have a tornado. Seth, let's talk quickly to you about the hail size and then I want to go to Kevin after that. Uh, so Seth, tell us about some of the large hail with this storm. Yeah, I've been kind of clicking around here doing the uh, best I can with the radar. It's right now telling us right around two inches. At one point, it looked like it was getting close to two and a half. This hail core, obviously north of the storm, and there's a lot of noise going on here on the screen. We've kind of drug it out here a little bit. This storm moving at 35 miles an hour, almost due east. And these are the kind of places you can expect that hail core. And I just saw a little bit of a tick up there, kind of that bright pink that so we might be talking about upwards of two inches here right now. But places here, the Taylorville High School, watching Stonington as well, in Prairieton, within the next about 30, 45 minutes there, you can see on the timeline, that's when this big hail core is going to move on through. There's no current indication right Real quick, uh, now this is a confirmed tornado warning, uh, confirmed tornado with the storm in Christian County. National Weather Service just updated that. You see the pink box now, a tornado ongoing near Kincaid. And I tell you what, that right there, uh, west of Sharpsburg, signs of uh, really some, some intense rotation there. Sharpsburg, the time is now to seek shelter. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to triple box with Kevin and then our sky cam on Decatur gives us a view of the storm from the north as this tornado now 
Uh, there's the debris signature. This is a healthy tornado now west of Sharpsburg moving off to the east. Uh, confirmed tornado. What we're looking at here is you see this circle. That is the tornado that has lofted debris into the air. It may be wrapped in the backside in rain. Kevin is looking at it now. Uh, do we have Kevin by chance? Kevin, I know we can see your shot here. Tell us where you are and what you're seeing as this confirmed tornado now moves towards the Sharpsburg area. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be just a few miles north of Taylorville. Um, I'm going to be just southeast of Sharpsburg, and I am east of Kincaid. Um, and, and we're looking into that storm here. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of, um, of a shelf there, but on the left side is going to be kind of that... Um, uh, wall cloud in there and so we're trying to see if we can see anything uh, right now. Um, I'm trying to get in position here uh, but as you noted a, a clear clear rotation signature uh, showing up on this uh, it could be a little difficult to see like you said uh, with the potential of it being um, kind of wrapped up in, in some of the rain but it is a very intense signature uh, showing up here. We're just kind of peeling around on the storm and uh, seeing what we can see. We're, we're right on this thing though. We're gonna be in a position here to, uh, uh, to, to see how this thing evolves, but we are, we're smack dab in the middle of, of this uh, storm as it's coming right at us here. So um, I'll, I'll send it to you for a second and then I'm gonna keep kind of getting in position, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna be right here. We're right in the middle of the tornado warned storm and it's coming right at us. Hey Kevin, wanna let you know real quick, the latest scan has just dived that pretty hard to the south and east. This may be coming a little closer to Taylorville, uh, so be aware there's some deviant motion inside this storm. I think it might be taking more of a southeastward track, uh, so just wanted to let you know based on that last scan. Kevin's going to be watching very closely. Uh, I would suggest that that is a, a very st a strong tornado based on all indications here moving to the south and east. Uh, now to about two miles north of Kincaid. We'll keep Kevin shot up, and Kevin, can you give me an exact crossroad by chance where you're at or, or an approximate location? I am 1250 East Road, 1250 East Road, and um, just east of 29. Just east of 29. Okay, good. You're a little bit ahead of it there. Uh, this is going to be very close, uh, about a mile and a half southwest of Sharpsburg, it appears. Uh, right, well, mile west or so from there. Um, the latest scan, not quite in on our system, but on my computer here, I can see um, going to be very close or just south and west of Sharpsburg. It'll be crossing, uh, this is close for Taylorville. Uh, I wanna go ahead and, and up my concern for Taylorville, the north side. I know the north side of Taylorville, there's the Walmart, uh, there's the Kroger, places like that. Really, I think at this point, a safe call is for Taylorville city limits. Go ahead and shelter for me here, as we're still a little unsure what, what this motion means. Um, but a little bit of a southeast jog does concern me a bit here uh, as we watch there. So, kind of back this up real quick. Um, Kevin's gonna watch it. Kevin, if you see anything, let production know in the back. I wanna know, Kevin will be on the top right screen here. On the bottom right is the storm itself. If we can uh, keep an eye on that as well. Seth, you've been watching that. That's the, the supercell thunderstorm in the distance. Let's bring the uh, camera full on Weather Metrics 3, the sky cam if we can for Decatur. I wanna show you the backside of the storm. This is the Springfield camera, is that correct? This is the Decatur camera. This is Decatur looking to the south. A healthy, mature supercell storm um, in place. All right, uh, I just got a message. Uh, my, my parents are on this storm. They're reporting a large tornado north of Kincaid at this point. And I'm hoping to get a picture from them. Um, let me just send a uh, message to the National Weather Service. And Jacob, adding to your point, I, I would have to agree. This one is definitely taking a little bit of a southern dive and the kind of the north side of Taylorville is definitely going to be a place to watch in the next couple of minutes. Just yeah, that's on a, right. On a quick little loop. And it certainly looks like it's going to, at the very least, kind of graze the north part of town there. It, it'd be close. And I just think the safe thing to do here at this point is to um, all, all we can watch that. Let's go ahead and bring my camera full here real quick. Uh, if we could, the triple box is great. I'd love to keep that up so we can also keep eyes on Kevin. What now is a large tornado uh, about three miles north of King, uh, three miles northwest of Taylorville, northeast of Kincaid. This is a look at the circulation. It's about to cross 29, about two miles north of Taylorville here. A large tornado in progress. We've got eyes on it. I'm waiting to see a picture of it here um, and uh, see if we've got it. Uh, don't have a picture yet. 
Um, but I know my parents are there. They're in the Kincaid area and saw the tornado and have passed that along. Uh, it seems like maybe here that that track kind of pulling south a little bit, but wrapping through Taylorville and Stonington and folks that are in between there. Eventually, if you got the, the creek or the, the lake there that goes northeast of Taylorville, that's where we're going to watch. Um, I believe it's Wiley's is the other place uh, where we will keep an eye on that. And so that certainly is something that we want to monitor closely. Um, Seth, I want to go ahead and have you take over a little bit on the quad. I want to check some photos and reports here of this. Uh, so if you can just kind of jump on the quad, talk about yep. where this is heading, that'd be helpful. Absolutely. And we'll keep that triple box up. Uh, now a large tornado in progress in Christian County, about halfway between Edinburgh and Taylorville near Sharpsburg. Seth, take it away. Yeah, so this is obviously a dangerous storm right now. Anyone in the path of this needs to start seeking shelter immediately. We mentioned kind of taking a little bit of a southern dive here. We just kind of got the last 15 minutes on a loop. Still has pretty good eastern extent. I think this is going to stay just a little bit north of town there. But if you're in Taylorville, take shelter now. The storm's going to be way too close for comfort there. That's going to cross over 48 here within the next couple of minutes as well. Also just watching places like Stonington. This might go just to your south here a little bit. As I said a second ago, way too close here for comfort. And we're watching, again, the pink box confirmed tornado. I've seen a little bit out there. I've been watching on the social media. It definitely looks like there's something in there. Kind of rain wrapped views is all I've been getting so far. Jacob, you've got a picture over there now. Let us yeah, see. we got a picture down. This is of the tornado as it was to the north and east of Pawnee. So this tornado has been on the ground for a little while here. That is it. Uh, that large tornado that's been spotted and uh, is moving to the east now. That's going to be very close to Taylorville. Sharpsburg in particular worried about that. There will likely be some uh, damage in that area from this. And so we'll continue to watch with that. Uh, so there's the tornado. It's clear to us now that there is a large tornado in Christian County. Seth, if you can get ready, perhaps some of the tips for where people should shelter. Yes. I think that's appropriate at this time. Uh, we are calling for folks in northern Christian County now to be in shelter at this point. This will include Sharpsburg. Time is out. It's near or just south of town. Very close call for that. Uh, Taylorville, we're going to have you included at this point. Wiley's, I think, is next. This may stay just north of Taylorville. This same area actually had... Uh, um, a tornado right north of Taylorville back on June 29th when the derecho came through. And it's moving right through those same areas. So Wiley's, Stonington, eventually to the east. Later on, heads up for Mawequa and Assumption. Uh, and uh, so that's a concern. I do believe this has crossed Illinois 29 now and has moved off to the east. Kincaid, I'll give you an all clear. Tovey, San Chris Lake, I'll give you an all clear. This still Sharpsburg, Taylorville East is where the concern is right now. Um, I see Kevin has stopped. I don't know if we have him, but uh, we don't see much. What I'll do, Seth, is go ahead and tell us some of these safe tips, safety tips that you've got, and then we will um, we will come back and, and keep watching this progress here. Yes, absolutely. So if you're anywhere in this tornado warning right now, or even around it, you definitely want to be making these safety precautions right now. You need to proceed to your safe place. That could be, for example, if you have a basement, that is the ideal place to be. If you do not have any kind of underground level, the best place to be is the most interior part of your house, away from any windows there. If you have a bathtub in the middle part of your house, that would be an ideal place to go there. Mobile homes, you need to get out of there. If you have time, you cannot be in a mobile home as a tornado passes on through. It will be able to just wipe it away there and just push anything out of its way. If you're in a vehicle, again, you don't want to be out there on the roads right now. You want to get to a safe space away from this storm. In addition to that, once you're inside your house, you need to get in, you need to get down to your lowest level, and you need to cover up as well. Pillows are a good thing to put on you. If you have a helmet, that's also an ideal thing there to be wearing in case any kind of debris starts to come on into the building there. you got to stay down there until you're all clear as well. Now, if there's also going to be plenty of power outages around the storm as well. The good thing is we're also over there on the streaming platforms there, our Facebook, our Twitter, even on the website, wci.com slash weather slash severe. Got a live stream of that. So if you don't have power, you can still stay up to date on the uh, ongoing storm that is here right now in the northern Christian County area. So that's all the safety precautions you need to take. If you get all this checked off your list there, you've done everything that you can to protect yourself from the storm. Jacob, do we have uh, any kind of new updates with it? Yeah, I'm kind of checking the chat uh, and seeing some information on things. Some folks are in the uh, Christian County area and they're saying sirens are going off. That's great. Uh, remember that uh, the sirens are one way to get information, but we, we really encourage multiple ways to get information. Download our WCIA3 weather app. If a situation like this comes your direction, we'll give you a push alert when a tornado warning is issued. Uh, that's the case now in Christian County. This tornado warning is now uh, for right north of Taylorville, uh, moving off to the East, and I'll bring back the photo that we had up from this. This is from a chaser I know. Uh, he sent it to us. That again, the confirmed tornado as it was closer to Pawnee, crossing the San 
San Chris Lake area. A little concerned about San Chris Lake and any damage in that area. I know news is listening. And so if news, you're hearing us, uh, if we can make some calls, I've just texted the Springfield Bureau as well to follow up on those areas. So we will watch things very closely Jacob, with that. You also have a tornado warning in eastern Fayette County along I-70 heading to Effingham County right now. Well, we're going to have two storms here, so we'll divvy up things in. Uh, Seth, I'll let you take that because that's down to your that's Correct. Down that is back down ground. there towards Effingham. So um, that's kind of uh, going to be east of Vandalia. Does not include Effingham County, but yeah, uh, there it looks like what they're seeing here is, you know, something. And I'm thinking here, I probably need to switch radar. That's going to be a St. Louis radar, isn't it? It's going to be difficult to tell with this one because it's pretty far away from is the it? local radar there. The St. Okay. Louis one's probably our best bet, but even uh, it kind there of... There it is. That's right on the interstate there. I-70. Yeah, right I-70, I-70, kind of the St. M.O. area yeah, on yeah, its yeah. way into Altamont, the county fairgrounds out Definitely. that direction, of course. So. Yeah, two tornado warned storms to watch here right now. It is extremely hard here to make out much detail on this one just because of its distance from the radar. But there is enough of an indication with rotation aloft that they have kind of pulled the trigger here on the tornado warning. And again, this is heading into the Effingham County area here, eventually exiting on I-70 in Fayette County here at the moment. Places like Altamont, kind of south of Effingham there. Places like Funkhauser, Watson will start to be watching that here. The benefit of this is the southwest part of Effingham County isn't greatly populated, but if you are out in that direction, definitely a time to uh, seek shelter here with this one. No confirmation. That's why it's a red box here, but you cannot take anything. Uh, you can't be too safe with this. Definitely need to make sure that you are ready to go there for that one. That's right. All right, let's uh, go ahead and see if we can talk to Kevin. He's on that storm. This tornado now going to be about two miles north of Taylorville, moving to these pretty quickly. Wiley's uh, it's going to be heading towards Stonington. It'll be heading towards, uh, um, let's see, the May Township area. That's going to be kind of that little river area in the northeast side extended from Lake Taylorville. Uh, Kevin, it, it appears in our end to be rain wrapped, and I think you're really close to it. Go ahead and tell us what you're seeing yep. and where you're at. Yep, it is. It's absolutely rain wrapped. Um, you can just see curtains, uh, curtains of rain. I'm trying to again get back out ahead of this here. Um, I'm going to be on the northeast side of Taylorville right now, and so I'm um, I'm, I'm actually tra traveling south right now. I'm going to be uh, coming up here to 48 here in just a moment. Um, but we watched the storm pass right by us, and it was. It was rain wrapped, um, definitely a tornado in there. Um, it was tough to pick it out, extremely dark uh, skies and whatnot. Um, but we are just kind of coming here to Taylorville. I'm going to kind of reposition and uh, I'll have just a little bit. All right, Kevin's going to come and go. Uh, he's I've been down there before and it's tough chasing in there, um, but uh, he's going to be watching watching that storm. Kevin, we kind of lost you for a second. I, I see you're moving now. You said you're moving to the east and north a little bit. Is that right? Um, I am I am actually going uh, southwest right now, um, coming into Taylorville, um, right along 48. Um, yeah, right, right, uh, right here on the northeast side of town. You can just see, here we go. Uh, just look at these rain bands. Look at the, you can see the winds here. They are really, really cranking right now. Yeah, there's likely going to be some damaging wind coming into the north side of Taylorville. I know where that's at. You're on that northeast side there. Uh, Kevin, just so you know, with the, the river that's out there, the, the creek, your best bet might end up being to blast east uh, from Taylorville when you drop south a little bit on the Lincoln Trail Road. Uh, that'll kind of get you through that. There's some, some gaps in there, and I'm afraid if you go further north towards Wiley's, you're not going to get across, and that tornado is going to be on top of you as it's now uh, right between Taylorville and Wiley's at this point. Uh, so if you turn to the north there, you might see it in the back camera. But I know you're going to sneak into town and, and kind of uh, uh, get uh, ahead of this storm. So, Kevin, thanks for your report. If you see anything, let us. There we go. There's the behind the, the looking behind. The, it's rain wrap. Perhaps the only way you would see this tornado is if you're on the north side, north and west side. Got to give it uh, Wiley's. Wiley's, Wiley's, Wiley's. We got to get you to shelter here at this point. Uh, if you if you were close to where the tornado came on June 29th, that's where this is heading here. There was a, uh, I think it was an EF1 tornado that came through the north side of Taylorville. That is heading this way as well. 
and is going to be very close to that track at this point. Likely it's been on the ground for a while. There's the hook. That's going to be a problem. Wiley's Stonington. This should be just far enough south, but if you're in Stonington, go ahead and shelter for me just in case this thing wraps back up to the north. I want to mention also the hail. There's going to be some big hail in Mount Auburn and Stonington and uh, eventually up to the north and east uh, as we head into parts of southern Macon County. Um, that's going to be Blue Mound, perhaps. Uh, looks like Mount Auburn's a little far north, but in that area between Mount Auburn and Taylorville, uh, you cut across there from Stonington and Blue Mound, a lot of rural real estate. But there's folks that live out there. Probably some big hail to report in, in that area with the particular storm moving on through. Uh, Seth, I just want to check. You got anything on the... Any of the other storms here? Yeah, I'm still watching that one that's in Fayette County here at the moment. I did just see they added a severe thunderstorm warning to the west side of it. And in my opinion, I know it's a high kind of radar beam angle there, but there is some developing rotation right around the Vandalia area right now. So there's kind of two different uh, two different cores here to the storm, so to speak. I think the one that's under the tornado warning is probably the less of the two to worry about, just from what I can tell. But there is a little bit of development there just south of Vandalia. And again, this is high level rotation there. I'm going to go ahead and flip things to the Effingham camera. I did kind of point things out that direction. It's kind of hard to make out what's going on. You can see plenty of rain blocking there, but you can kind of see that tail flowing in there, those clouds off to the left side of the screen there. Something that we are going to watch. This is the closest camera we have to that. I don't have any kind of reports on that here at the moment, but I do, of course, have plenty of uh, friends and family down that direction, and we'll be uh, asking them if they can let us know anything that's going on. This one, again, just warned for tornado potential. Nothing confirmed just yet, though, with this one. Yeah, so uh, I'm just seeing more reports. It looks like this tornado was near San Chris Lake uh, and moving off to these. So um, there's going to be some concern of damage in the San Chris Lake area. Um, and the tornado continues to move to the east. It's still down. It is still down now, right over Wiley's as it moves off to the south and east. So I'm kind of watching to, to see if uh, we've got uh, anyone we know out there as well. It's wrapped in rain. That's the hard thing. And uh, I know that's not very friendly territory for chasing here with this particular storm. Let's talk about where this tornado is. Now it's crossing Illinois 48 on the ground between Taylorville and Wiley's. It's going to be moving into a populated area here right now. In fact, it's on Northeast Taylorville there. If you're familiar, this right here is the creek. Continues up a lot of homes on there. Concerned that there will be some damage from a confirmed tornado there. If you know anyone in Taylorville, Eastern Christian County, uh, let them know. Send them a text. Be a part of our messaging and say, hey, Channel 3 is on it. They've got a chaser on it, and uh, we're watching things here. Speaking of chaser, let's go ahead and bring Kevin full. Uh, it looks like he's maybe creeping a little to the north and east. Um, Kevin, where are you at? What are you seeing? Yeah, this thing is uh, its pretty intense here. We're kind of, we're just on the south side of it here. Um, we're really getting hit by some winds right now. Uh, I can see the sheets of rain uh, that are just blowing um, quite a bit of, of wind with this. Uh, power lines are moving pretty good. I'm looking off here to the east, essentially. Um, I've got uh, police behind me uh, as they're coming through. Boy, it's, it's, we're really getting rocked here right now. We've got a really good storm. Yeah, Kevin, uh, that tornado crossed very close to 1550 North Road in Illinois 48. That's about a mile north there. It was just north of that, uh, and, and it's going to be now moving to the east. Looks like it's now crossed 48, going to be at 1550 North and 1600 East Road, and uh, going to move through some of that. At this point, Kevin, it might be safest to sneak south to the Lincoln Trails and kind of sneak east of town to get over that little river there. This is a tornado, folks, a, a damaging tornado now, about a mile south of Wiley is moving through some, some people. people People live there, and uh, we are here to bring them coverage. There will be damage in Taylorville on the northeast side before long. And I know uh, Taylorville got hit a month and a half ago or so. Uh, they got hit, of course, really hard uh, a few years ago. And we're thinking with Taylorville at this point, Taylorville proper, downtown Taylorville. You live, you know, in city limits. You are clear. We have passed the storm. There is still a lot of wind. There is still going to be heavy rain with that. But the tornado is now just to the east of 48 northeast of town. I can give you that all clear um, from the tornado threat. Still might be some wind that's a concern. I'm going to kind of zoom out. I just want to watch everything here. Do have a new severe thunderstorm warning for a storm that's in Montgomery County. That's over Raymond. They're heading towards Nokomis. That could be a Shelby County problem in the next 30 minutes. Some signs of rotation with that, although uh, not 
obvious to us at this point. This is the game here, folks. This is the storm to watch as we continue to have a tornado moving to the east, uh, moving closer and closer to Assumption and uh, those areas. And it is rain wrapped by all things we can tell here uh, with that. Just kind of checking some of the info again. You see these bright reds here, these bright greens, that's called a velocity couplet. Green means wind blowing towards the radar, red away. Well, there's your circulation right here, and it's very tight, uh, an indication that the tornado is ongoing at this time. As we check the debris signature, here's our debris signature now as it's moving through some of those populated areas. A little messy to the north, but that boundary is wrapped in and is clear as day right there as this confirmed tornado now continues to move through Christian County. Let's talk downstream here. US 51, Assumption. We were just in Assumption on Friday. We got a lot of friends down there. This will be very close to Assumption as well as Mawikwa uh, moving in that direction uh, soon. No tornado warning yet, but if you're in Assumption, you're in Mawikwa, you know someone there, I'd be considering uh, texting them, give them a heads up and say, hey, Channel 3's got your back. We're watching with you. And then that after that, it will carry into northern Shelby County. Uh, you got Yanisville here, little, little mini community. You got Finley here. Uh, Shelbyville sits here. This should stay north of Shelbyville. Shelbyville Lake, Lake Shelbyville. If you've got folks who are camping out there, at least it's a Sunday night, a lot of times camping winds down. This storm is heading in that direction. If there's someone still doing some long camping, they're, they're keeping up on things, um, might be worth letting them know as well. The concern now growing for Shelby County and uh, the Lake Shelbyville area as the storm continues to be producing a tornado from what we can tell here. Let's bring that triple box back. That way we can keep an eye on it. At this point, Seth, also, um, from a camera perspective, the next one we've got, say again. Who's got hail? I'm not hearing anything on mine. Uh, talk to Seth if you can. Kevin has hail. Kevin has hail. Okay, Kevin. Um, yeah, okay, let's go to Kevin then. Kevin, what do you got? Tell us what you're seeing. Yeah, get, starting to get some hail here. Again, these just real heavy bands um, of rain and uh, the wind really kicking up here. Um, I'll hear every once in a while um, a crack of, of, of hailstone hitting the storm tracker. But look at this. I can barely see in front of me. The rain is coming down so hard. The wind is blowing it as well. Uh, you can see emergency uh, lights here up ahead. Uh, you can't even see. Um, the, the wind is blowing so much and these sheets of rain are blowing through. Again, I am northeast of Taylorville um, and just kind of creeping up and uh, seeing what we can see, but we are still in the thick of it here. We're on 48 um, and this storm is very powerful. Uh, it's got some really strong winds, even without the uh, the tornado signature. Um, the winds within it are, are pretty strong there as well, um, if you look at that. But we're just creeping up here on 48, and uh, the, the looks like the rotation is, is going to be to our east. But, man, it is still quite intense out here in the storm tracker right now. All right, thanks for that report, Kevin. Kevin, I have a feeling, based on radar, uh, there's going to be some damage in that uh, river area, that subdivision, about a mile and a half to your east. Um, the tornado's still ongoing at this point. Uh, it's going to be probably close to the May Township building area. Um, Anselm Landscape Rock, kind of in that region, maybe south of Tanner Cemetery. Somewhere in there, uh, there's going to be some probably debris of some sort from this tornado uh, that has passed on through. As we watch here, this storm, there's some maybe good news, I would say. You notice how messy it's getting here to the south? That circulation is wrapped up in there. Sometimes what can happen is as these lift to the north, and I'll show you here in the loop, that may help disrupt the circulation. Whether it happens in time enough for Assumption and Mawikwa, not sure, but I really think this is heading very close to Assumption. This red circle right here is our tornado, very much wrapped in rain, not something that you're going to be able to see as we uh, move on through. Again, watching right now, 654, live coverage of a tornado that has struck Christian County. On the top right corner of your screen, you see Chief Meteorologist Kevin Leidy in the storm tracker. The bottom right is our sky cam, and I believe that's Decatur. Uh, we might want to, um, we might want to um, switch that, perhaps, Seth. I'm not sure what you think. 
uh, and you're still watching that Effingham count or the storm heading towards Effingham County. Do you want to take over that for a second? Yes. Let's bring that up, and I'll get uh, I'll get my Effingham cam pulled up on there. I can't really see too much action going on from. Uh, I'll get that pulled up on my uh, on my Max computer here real quick. I'm not seeing too much from Effingham here at the moment. In fact, I think this storm in general is just kind of uh, starting to train on itself a little bit. We'll get up the radar image there and take a look. It is right over kind of the Vandalia area right now, or at least the core of the west end of this one. Again, the tornado warnings kind of uh, downstream of this. I, I think the new spot to worry about is going to be just east of Vandalia there going up the road on I-70, kind of heading towards places like Otego and towards the St. Elmo area. And this one's just moving awfully slow. We're going to flip to velocity here real quick. And this is a very high angle beam there from the radar. This is all the way out from St. Louis. So we're plenty high in the sky here, but you can see two different areas of interest there on rotation. I'll get up my little uh, pointer and just make sure you can see them there. Kind of that one north of uh, Lone Grove, kind of just got general broad rotation up here southwest of St. Elmo as well. But I'm really watching this one kind of just east of town there in Vandalia. There is a little bit of a uh, strengthening couplet that direction. It's kind of started to plateau as far as its strength has gone, but it can, it's still something to really keep an eye on. And one more thing I'll bring up here with this is the hail core on the west end of this thing. Let me bring up that image here real quick. And we are starting to also see hail in this one approaching two inches in diameter there. We'll just drop a marker right east of Vandalia. You're seeing hail, yeah, one and a half inches in diameter there. So this one, a, a strong storm, not as strong as the one that we're watching over there in Christian County right now, but there's some good hail with this one. There's some rotation and uh, this one, uh, this one definitely has some more uh, time that we're going to need to watch it on here as we continue to move forward. Yeah, so we got the tornado watch for a lot of our area that goes until 10 o'clock and a lot of these storms moving through that first shot. Southern Christian County has been added to that severe thunderstorm warning. It has what's called a tornado possible tag. That's the storm that'll be close to the Nokomis area soon. Uh, it'll be heading towards uh, perhaps Pena eventually. That means that there's some weak rotation, not immediately obvious, but still something that's worth watching. We've got our confirmed 20. It's still down. It is still down moving east from Taylorville now, uh, according to radar. And we've had multiple reports from spotters of that. Then uh, Fayette County watching that storm. I know we got some folks that are, you know, Champaign-Urbana, Danville looking fine. Here's some rain moving on through. It seems like the bulk of the activity is going to carry from Decatur South, perhaps Tuscola South, uh, Effingham, Mattoon, Charleston, Shelbyville, Sullivan, next major towns, the next uh, county seats and, and whatnot that are in the path of this as we continue to watch. I want to keep that triple box up. I'm going to keep as much eyes with Kevin as we can. And then the Skycam South, I'll let you pick what we're looking at. Uh, I think on that triple box now, that's weather metrics three. What do we have? have on that one. I will put up the Effingham one here at the moment. I'm going to see if I can get anything good on that Decatur one still okay. if we're just kind of completely blocked out. And eventually that Matt Toon one does face west. It's too far away, but that's Correct. something that is uh, going to uh, be worth watching. All right, new tornado warning just extended from our confirmed tornado. This is going to be including areas between Assumption and Mawequa and parts of northern Shelby County. If you live in Assumption, I think you should go ahead and shelter. If you live in Mawequa, I'd go ahead and shelter. We've got this confirmed tornado that's been on the ground through most of the county here. Um, and we first had that report towards Kincaid. Let me just measure the distance that we had for this tornado. Uh, we're talking, it could be on the ground for 20 miles potentially. Just uh, a rough estimate there. National Weather Service will probably be out tomorrow surveying and uh, I know we're going to have some damage that comes in from this uh, as we move on through. Uh, let me talk here. Ooh, wow. Got some two inch hail five miles north of Taylorville on Mount Auburn Blacktop at 645 p.m. Um, that's pretty impressive. I'm going to grab that here. And uh, so we've got had the storm has had some large hail. I don't think the hail looks as large, does it, Seth? No, not It's come not down quite. a bit. Yeah. But at one point, there was some pretty big hail. It was. I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of got close to two and a half or three inches there at one point. I just kind of saw some white in there when we were kind of looking at the yeah, activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is the circulation. This was at 655. Uh, we get scans every couple of minutes here. And you'll notice in the last couple of scans over the last four or five minutes, it appears that the circulation has started to broaden. We no longer have those tight colors close together. They are still there, though. Those uh, colors this red showing a lot of winds wrapping in the back side. You've got your greens. So while right at this point, the tornado may have finally lifted, it still is a threat where um, between Mawequa and Assumption on 51, where the storm is heading, uh, it would still be on guard for that. Looking a little further to the south, some signs of wind increasing southeast of Taylorville. We'll watch that as well. No warning there. We've got that confirmed tornado warning still in Christian and now into um, northern Shelby County. Here's another interesting thing, and I tend to think so. This is a, a radar artifact. This here, that, that little velocity showing near Shelbyville, I think that's a, a what we call a left split storm. I think that's moving more north. 
That doesn't okay. seem to me to be a tornadic problem. Correct. At yeah, this that point. Kind of, that's typically the way those left splits work too. Yeah. They're the weaker so, of the two and don't quite last quite as long or look as impressive. Uh, yeah, a little bit of, of you know, a little science for you, I suppose. Those those left hooks off, or the, those left movers, a lot of times they can turn into hail producers. That might be something to watch as we're keeping an eye on the Shelbyville area and points to the north and east, but it doesn't look all that strong. We'll watch it. I don't really have a concern for tornado with that storm at this time. Um, Want to just kind of check around real quick here. And Seth, I don't know if you've seen anything on social media either or any National Weather Service reports that have come on through? I've gotten uh, I've got my post out there just asking some Effingham people. I haven't had anything from that yet. Um, nothing urgent from the National Weather Service that I don't think you've already mentioned. Looks like there's a video of the storm from Kincaid, but other than that, that's kind of been the one that we've been watching here for a little bit. I'm not seeing anything terribly new here and I'm not really seeing too much of a change in what's going on there around uh, Fayette and Effingham counties as well. That storm almost going to be more of a hail threat and kind of just a flash flood threat in that direction. I feel like it's barely moved there since we brought it up, but still got that tornado warning on it, still has that rotation aloft, something that will continue to monitor down that direction. In general, though, it kind of looks like we're starting to have these storms kind of run into each other now that you got the rain into that tornado now. Let's pull Kevin's feet up. I know it's stopped, but I'm going to pull it up just to get he, it's frozen. I want to see what he's got there. Um, he's really having trouble with that right now. That's a tree down in the road in front of him. Uh, are, are we able to talk to Kevin at all or is the feed too bad? Kevin, can you hear us all? Looks like we're not having any luck here, but he's got damage now. Uh, that's on that northeast side uh, of town. Maybe okay. here he is. Okay, take Kevin now if we can. Kevin, what do you got? All right, we're having trouble with Kevin there. That's okay. He is looking at damage, though, now northeast of Taylorville, some trees down on the road uh, from this tornado that went on through. And I tell you what, Seth, seeing some of the pictures, this was a sizable tornado. Yeah, this was something to, yeah, definitely not have messed around with. This isn't just some tornado that you kind of pick up, put the warning on. This was a uh, this was a pretty decent-looking one. And, it, you know, from Kevin's image there, it kind of looks like we're starting to see the, the after effects of what that tornado has been able to do. So if you're still in the path of that, although it's kind of getting rain-wrapped, you know, now more so than ever, get to shelter because if you can't can't see that thing coming. It's going to uh, it's going to do its thing without you even. And, knowing. and I look in the background. You can barely make it. Out. I can't tell if those are trees that are torn up there. Can you kind of see? It, there's a power line down. Yeah, as well. power line down. It kind of looks like there's something, something ragged in there. the background too. Obviously that branch there. So, the so there's been but. clearly some damage in that area. Uh, and so we're going to watch Kevin's shot pretty close here. Um, we'll, we'll see if we can get any information from him. Um, Kevin, are you able to hear us at all? Hello, Kevin. Kevin, tell us what you got. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, so uh, found a little bit of damage here. Obviously, there's a tree down, power line down here. Um, I'm going to be just a... All right. Um, let's see here. What am I on? I am on 1600... Uh, actually, 1550 East North Road. I just turned on... Uh, to the road just south of Wiley's there. Um, and I can't, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get across here or not, but I think there might be more damage just up ahead. So I'm going to try to uh, maneuver around this, but you can see it, um, in the middle of the um, I'm going to try to get on the other side of this because I think there's more damage here uh, just to my north. Yeah, I'm, Kevin. Also, I'm also getting some hail right now as well. Not um, with, with this. Not surprised about that. Still some hell with that storm there. Right now. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Kevin, want to let you know, if you can get back to 48, you can cut up to Wiley's and then drop south on 1600 East Road. That might be a way to get up there um, as well. So that could be an option if you're not able to get through. And then you kind of are stuck winding through that little creek area there. So kind of uh, we'll see what you can get from us and we'll keep an eye on it. Again, the signal's bad. That part of the area, you got trees, the cell service, not the greatest for us, but we will get what we can from him as this moves on through. Tornado warning continues for eastern Christian County, now northern Shelby County. Our area of rotation is fully wrapped up in rain. Assumption and Mawequa, go ahead and take your shelters. Yanisville area, shelter as well. Uh, if you're watching us in Shelbyville, watching us in Tower Hill, Windsor, Finley, you're okay now. Our next in line for this storm is Finley and Lake Shelbyville, uh, the Shelbyville Lake area, and that is a concern uh, with this here. As we drop a little further to the south, some growing concern for tornado potential in southern Christian County and northern Montgomery County, perhaps Nokomis, uh, eventually Pena, south of Morrisonville. That might be an issue for us here as we, we watch uh, further things happen down there. Um, and... Uh, 
I, I think we'll keep an eye on that. Then we've got the Fayette County, and Seth, you've been watching that. This might be an Effingham County problem here pretty quick. Uh, any thoughts on what we're seeing down there? Yeah, I'm trying to get the best angle of this because the St. Louis Raider and the Lincoln Raider are kind of, you know, I think the St. Louis one is the closer of the two. But right now, the rotation aloft kind of looking a little flatter than what it once did. Um, obviously, some bright colors on there now, though, is what we're starting to see. They do just have the tornado warning still for the eastern port, uh, eastern portion, excuse me, of Fayette County. And we're kind of watching. I've got people in uh, southwestern Effingham County, kind of where the uh, front edge of that storm is. So far, just kind of reports of wind picking up, a little bit of rain out there right now. So nothing too, uh, nothing too crazy going on at the moment. But this is a slow-moving storm. This thing is just crawling to the east. So flash flooding is going to be a concern here with this one and it looks like this one's just kind of been straight east so far with the rotation so not too concerned about this heading up towards the uh, Altamont area or towards Effingham kind of just looking at some of these uh, rural towns like the uh, kind of Mason and Edgewood area is where we might see this one end up here in the next several minutes and if you can um, actually do me a kindness uh, update the tornado watch for everyone as well I yes. just got some video Let's I want to get that pulled up there I just got something on my watch that buzzed about the tornado watch so let's take a look they're starting to peel back on it looks like the areas that have already seen some of the tornadic Activity. So Cass in Morgan County now off the board. We'll probably gradually see this as we go throughout the night. But obviously right now with the tornadoes kind of hanging around in Christian County, still seeing them in Fayette on its way to Effingham. I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be too shocked to see this watch hold up there until the 10 p.m. deadline there as it just looks like there's too much activity going on. But Cass and Morgan now officially off the board. And I have to think at this point as well that there's some places on the west side of this line of storms that we've been tracking that probably just don't have much of a threat there left anymore aside from just an occasional storm popping up. We're going to put back up the radar image here real quick. And uh, you got something there, Jacob? Pick yeah, uh, go ahead and pull max to full if we can. I'm going to show you this video I just got. This is the tornado in rural Stonington. That is it right there. Clear as day why we are bringing continuing coverage. Thanks to Ashley for sending that. Uh, this is in rural Stonington was the tornado that has moved through that area. And I'll loop it again for you. Um, that's a nice, uh, nice stovepipe looking tornado. There was going to be damage in the area uh, from this storm as it continues. You know, we've thought maybe, maybe in that area, it was going to be something where uh, f only further north would be the problem for us. Um, or uh, let me rephrase that, further north we would see things. Um, You'd have to be on the north side, and that's the case here. If you look at that, I'll loop it one last time. It looks like it's moving slightly from right to left, so she's looking to the south and west at this tornado. When Kevin was on the south side, wasn't able to see that there, and so that's a video that I wanted to share why we are bringing you this coverage in the area. Seth, if I can hand it to you for a second, um, just kind of talk us through on Max 1, Area-wide, let's talk about all these storms, these confirmed tornadoes, and, and the damage reports that will be trickling on in. Um, let me just update real quick. I got a message from our Springfield Bureau. Um, from So at this point in Taylorville proper, there is not any reports of damage, just hail and heavy rain. That's from Chief Wheeler in Taylorville. Uh, be the rural areas that are out there, perhaps, that are having some of those issues. So I uh, wanted to just relay that along. Seth, go ahead and uh, take over a little bit and talk us what you're seeing. Yeah, we're just going to kind of take an overview here. The area will go from north to south. Obviously, the big one that we've been talking about there, a pretty sizable tornado at one point up now in parts of northern Shelbyville is where that one's heading, still kind of in the east the Christian County area there, kind of moving right over Assumption. i have kind of lost the ability to tell exactly where the tornado is. You can kind of still see that little kind of uh, indent there. Again, it's going to be pretty rain-wrapped here at the moment. Keep an eye on that. So move on down to the south. Anywhere you see these, uh, these severe thunderstorm warning boxes that kind of have the orange outline around them, that's when we have the tornado pop possible tag on them. So we're watching that here as this one begins to move on into eastern Montgomery County and maybe parts of western Shelby here before too long. Obviously parts of southern Christian County. Looking at this one, it's had the considerable tag here for just a little bit. Let's flip it over to Velocity and just kind of take a look and see what's going on in there. There's been some pretty broad rotation aloft on that one. Nothing's looked uh, too impressive so far here in the last couple of scans, but another uh, area of interest to watch. I'm going to flip back over here to our reflectivity image here and look down to the south. This one now does have a severe thunderstorm warning for Effingham County, and that one again has the kind of reddish orange outline around it. That is also the tornado possible tag to it, and I will put velocity up on that one as well because there, this one's definitely been kind of up and down as far as what it looks like. Still looks kind of flat up there on velocity. If it's flat aloft, it's certainly going to be flat there at the ground, but still something to monitor. It looks like we've got a new video in Jacob. Where are we looking at? Yeah, this uh, came from my friend Shay. He's from uh, Painted. This is going to be of that tornado earlier northwest. Notice at the bottom. 
you see those flashes. Uh, that's the tornado causing damage to the infrastructure. It's maybe a little hard to see. Bring it full there and you can see it a little better. Wrapped up in rain. Uh, that is a sizable tornado now that has done damage. And I believe he said he was in uh, closer to King Cade. Those flashes there, uh, signs of damage happening to the electrical infrastructure. What happens is as those power lines are hit, fuses blow and it protects the infrastructure further down and we get those bright blue flashes. Uh, that's a that's a big tornado there from earlier. And so uh, we are likely getting some reports of damage here before long. There's a lot of rain in that area, so it may take some time, but uh, I know that uh, there's going to be damage from the San Chris Lake area to the east, north of Kincaid, uh, close to Sharpsburg, and then eventually uh, to the north and east side of Taylorville uh, and some of the rural areas south of Stonington as this tornado continued off to the east. So I wanted to give you that video as well. I know some folks are saying, hey, I want to be on my shows. I would love to watch shows too, but at this point it is a life-threatening situation for folks in Christian, northern Shelby County. It is a dangerous situation for other areas, and uh, so we are going to continue our coverage here as we've had uh, a pretty significant situation evolve in Christian County here tonight. Let's reset here. I want to talk first off, this thing is entirely wrapped up in rain. Uh, you look at reflectivity and it's just a bucket of spilt paint. What we look for though is our velocity. And at this point, um, there may be a new tornado very close to the north side of Assumption, uh, very close to Assumption, uh, right there at the old, you know, US 51 used to come through Assumption where they started the, the bypass around to the north side. That's gonna be where that tornado is moving off to the east. I think that's going to be a new tornado here that's developing. Look at all this strong wind as well, those bright colors. The, the surge of wind here now on the south side of Assumption, likely going to be some problems in Assumption and uh, points to the east uh, at this point. And I would say if you're in Christian County, West West of US 51, I'll give you the all clear for the tornado. You're close to the east side there, assumption along, you're still going to have a lot of strong wind uh, from this storm as it moves off to the east. And I'll be interested to see how things evolve further down the line. Next in line, Pena, along US 51 between Assumption and Pena, there's going to be some strong wind that works its way on through that region uh, with this new developing tornado now, very close to Assumption in central, uh, northern and northeastern Christian. Christian County here in central Illinois. I want to kind of uh, adjust things a little bit, Seth. Uh, I'm going to switch to my other radar product and um I'm going to just analyze here real fast. Do I'll a tell you bit. what, Jacob, there's a little bit of that rain. We kind of talked about that left split earlier in Shelby County. It kind of looks like that's on a course for where that uh, tornado warned storm is. So maybe a little bit of uh, extra complication coming here soon is that rain probably yep. going to be intercepted by that and probably going to make things even harder to see there based on reflectivity alone. It might be. And I tell you what, the other thing I'm looking at, I'm looking at this little feature in the south oh, side yeah. of Assumption. Uh, the boundary is right here. It wouldn't surprise me to have a lot of strong wind, but that is an interesting feature now. Uh, and as soon as it's there, it looks like it's gone. This is the sign of strong wind now coming towards Pena, eventually Tower Hill. Our tornado is right here now, east of Assumption by about a mile. I know you can take the, um, you take the Assumption Fenley blacktop. That's where this is. It's moving east on that, and we'll move a little more south and east. There will probably be a new tornado warning coming out that will include more central Shelby County based on where this is. Uh, that may be closer to Shelbyville. Fenley, next in line, looks like uh, Shelbyville, the, the lake area, going to be an issue. And um, so, so probably going to be something else. Let's just check correlation coefficient or debris track. I don't see any debris there, but there's certainly a suspicious signature that's in that area. Further down here, um, Effingham County, again, kind of high. You're keeping a close eye on that. That's your stomping grounds there, yep. Seth. Uh, Southern Christian County would be interested in Pena to watch. Uh, the Nokomis area looks like uh, something near Wit. Uh, but uh, at this point, our main problem is now east of Assumption heading towards Finley. That'll take the blacktop. I think that's the road you can go straight on. And uh, if, I, if I'm correct here, um, from Assumption, you take that straight all the way to 121 to get to Solomon as a backup route. So that's kind of where we're, we're looking at things here uh, in the region. Let's get the radar back full here. And uh, there we go. 
it's a mess out there right now. Polygons and storms that are in place. Confirmed tornado earlier in Christian County may have lifted. There may be a new tornado now in northern Shelby County, and we will watch and see what happens with that. Uh, Seth was mentioning these little cells here out front. Sometimes what can happen is they will merge into the storm and help it to enhance the rotation. That's what's happened in southern Sangamon County. There was a tornado southeast of New City, and that tornado continued through San Chris Lake off towards the Taylorville area and points to the south and east uh, as it now is uh, a big problem east of Assumption, southeast of Mawequa. Christian County for the Taylorville area, all clear. Sangamon County, all clear. Southern Christian County towards Pena, uh, and uh, then Shelby County is where we will watch next. In particular, that tornado warning for northern Shelby County will continue here uh, for a while longer. Seth, if you can, I want to do a little bit of behind the scenes work here. Uh, I'd love to turn it over to you again to kind of walk us through those storms, update us, um, and then talk a little bit about Champaign-Urbana and those areas, because um, we got folks probably watching saying, you know, this isn't close to me. We got a large viewing area, but there's still, you know, areas that are under the severe threat and then areas that are not. So Seth, go ahead and, and take it away. Yep, so we're just gonna start with kind of a broad look here of the area. As you can see, a lot of this happening kind of south of 72. So places like Champaign, the Danville area, you know, you're watching this. There's not much going on here in your portion of the area. And to be honest, it really doesn't look like there will end up being much going on that direction. Never say never, but it kind of just looks like this uh, concentration of storms. It's gonna stay a little bit south. We were a little uncertain as to how far north this would go, but the bulk of the action here right now still within just kind of like you said that mess of polygons out here kind of in Christian Shelby County now in parts of uh, even parts of eastern Montgomery County there as well they still have a uh, a tornado possible tag on that one that's now over the Nokomis area but as we've been uh, following here we're going to pause the image and just kind of take a look at things it is really hard to tell what's going on in there right now just based on reflectivity but as we've been mentioning here within the last uh, last 15 or 20 minutes or so we'll go ahead and pull up our velocity image here and just show you this is all of a sudden starting to become a little bit more of a wind threat as well you can see just kind of in this general area i'll get my pointer out here this general area still seeing kind of that potential there for that confirmed tornado there on the ground just kind of watching for new development there but also parts just kind of south of assumption on its way there to the hinton area we're watching for some pretty damaging winds there into that as well could be talking in excess of 60 miles an hour perhaps up to 70 miles an hour there in some spots we're going to watch this as it starts to move through shelby county looking like the uh, bulk of the tornado threat is going to stay north of shelbyville itself there but definitely not ruling out some of that wind risk and uh we got anything yeah uh, let's go to kevin real quick can... kevin's in the storm tracker uh now and he's on scene of he, he said again no audio we that. have no audio let's take a shot full so we can see where he's at i know he's in the christian county area looks like the fire department is uh there we are probably going to hear from kevin in a little bit uh things get a little wet looks like he's taking a little rain in the inside of the windshield but uh certainly uh looks like first responders just getting out to the scene of some of these storms that are continuing uh, to cause issues in the christian county area so i saw that seth and wanted to get that across uh and um let uh, we'll watch and when we get a report from him, we will have an update to, on that. Just kind of check in uh, if you've got any reports, any any damage, anything like that. Um, please let us know. We've got Kevin out there. I know that. Um, um, let's see here. Just checking some other information. Nothing there. Um, Okay, so we're still watching the circulation. That's good there. Let's go ahead and come back to me um, as we keep an eye here. So far, if there's anything, it's on, It's a lot of strong wind that's just blown through Assumption. I would be uh, real interested to know about damage in the Assumption area from straight line wind. If there was a tornado, it would have been just north of town. It's not that tight, but as this continues to blow out here, sometimes you'll see that wind wrap around, and so that could be a that could be a problem for Finley, uh, Duval, Yantisville, and Henton moving forth. Tornado warning continues. 718 now. We've got that warning for a little while longer. Uh, and uh, there probably are some 60, 70, 80 mile an hour winds wrapping around there through the Assumption area. And so we'll keep updated on that. All right, we've got Kevin and audio from him. Uh, Kevin, I think you got a little water inside the uh, windshield of your car from, from that blowing rain sideways there. Um, we can see some new stuff coming in, from though. Uh, what do I see on the story while left there. Is that live right now? Is that Kevin's shot? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Kevin, can you can you hear us, Kevin? Talk about what you've got, what you're seeing. Yeah, I can hear you. 
All right, so um, again, where I you know, couldn't get across earlier, where there was that power line across the road, I uh, uh, went up and around, and so uh, we're seeing some damage here. I think this is where a tornado did pass through. Uh, a lot of tree damage here uh, snapped off here. The home here itself looks okay, but it looks like the family out here assessing things, but it did it definitely pass right through this area here. Uh, there is a power line, uh, actually a very large line that is down too that uh, maybe I can swing around and show it to you but again you can see the tops of the trees here snapped off um, pretty good uh, indicator there that uh, we probably had uh, the tornado come right through here uh, again this is what we're looking at we've got uh, crews that are out here I'm gonna see if I can swing this around and just bear with me here for a second as I try to uh, kind of show you uh, what's behind us here and what we've got are emergency vehicles that are back here and uh, they are, they've got this closed off because of a really large power line. So actually, hold on, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm actually gonna swing, I'm gonna swing around so we can get a um, better view of this here. But there's, this is definitely where we've had some damage uh, that has occurred. Uh, power lines down in this area, lots of trees down here as well. Uh, and so there is, is, is a better shot there. You can see that power line, that power pole that is down in this area. Uh, we're seeing a lot of damage like this. Um, and so they're out here right now. Uh, they have this uh, area blocked off and they are keeping people obviously away so that they can try to clean this up. But um, obviously some damage here from what was most likely a tornado. And uh, that is the view that you're getting right now with that power line that's down. And again, that line you can see uh, kind of goes all along here and uh, there's there's another line that's down uh, further down the road where i was showing you earlier lots of ponding on roads too man these county roads are just full of water um so again we think that this is definitely where we had that tornado pass through um probably now uh, 40 minutes ago or so so that is the report here from right now again few trees down here and there snapped off the tops and a lot of power lines down as well Kevin, have you been able to talk to anyone on scene uh, about anything at all, or you have any inf anything like that for us, perhaps? Uh, not, not yet. Um, I, they were just rolling up here when I actually got here, so they were just assessing things. So they were pretty new to the scene. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to get up here and ask uh, ask some of the guys um, what they're seeing and uh, if they've heard any other reports. But uh, definitely, this power line is is down across the road here, and they've got traffic obviously, and, and the roadway closed down as a result. Um, but uh, seeing a lot of emergency vehicles out here, you can see uh, there's the fire department there from Stonington. Um, and so that's what we're dealing with here right now uh, with damage from what most likely was the path of a tornado that came through here a little bit earlier. All right, thanks for your report, Kevin. Kevin, I'll also be very curious about uh, damage that's further to the west. Uh, the tornado looked like it was uh, pretty sizable towards the Kincaid area, San Crusoe Lake, uh, and near Sharpsburg. So there's probably a trail of damage. Uh, could be um, a little bit, you know, could be, 15, 20 miles, perhaps, based on, on radar observations and whatnot. So uh, keep us updated on that. And we will leave your shot up, Kevin, in case you are, are uh, getting any information, things of that. So uh, thanks so much, Kevin. Let us know if you've got anything else to report. All right, uh, so we'll keep that. We've got the camera in Effingham also. Uh, our concern right now still is primarily for Shelby County. Christian County as a whole is all clear. The rotation now, uh, south of Yanisville, going to cross Illinois 128, south and west of Finlay. Uh, we'll be crossing through the Shelbyville Lake area area here soon. It's not as impressive and I think what could happen is we could see this maybe uh, continue to weaken but a new severe thunderstorm warning likely to come. Got messages that Pena storm sirens are going off. Uh, that's the case. You hear the storm sirens? Okay, I don't need to get more information. Things of that. So uh, uh, <laughs> keep us updated on that. Uh, if you've got anything, you know, we, we appreciate those messages and, and, and things of that. That is the storm that we've got. Let me put back on our reflectivity and as we look at it here it looks like a mess it's hard to make out any details but that leading edge is going to be where the wind is coming on through there could be some strong winds in the Pena area as uh, these storms continue but perhaps most interested here in uh, Nokomis the, the tail end of the storm that can be another place that uh, is causing issues and uh, we will watch that eventually that'll be Oconee and then Herrick and Cowden uh, if that moves in that direction and then for Effingham County 
again, this part of the area is hard to see entirely what's happening, but really interested there south of Mason along the county line there, south of Effingham. It's not an Effingham County problem, but it is uh, still uh, a pretty sizable storm, and there may be some big hail in Mason and in Watson uh, from that storm. As you see some of those pinks and purpley colors there, usually that's a sign of uh, you start getting golf ball size with those types of, of measurements. We did earlier have a, a tennis ball size hail report up here north of Taylorville. There's been a lot of big hail from Taylorville to Stonington, and the storm continues off to uh, the east. Kevin's now, it looks like that's the Stonington Fire Department that's out on scene of damage in Christian County. Our tornado warning now is centered in Shelby County and will continue to be there as we are watching things very closely. Um, and um, just kind of checking some other information here. Mm. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so just checking that source of information. Haven't had anything new from there, uh, but we know that there's a lot of damage in Christian County from this storm. Kevin's been on some of that and uh, is going to probably reposition and, and move uh, in a different direction uh, from there. So, uh, Seth, time now will reset 725. This tornado warning in Shelby County will continue for a little while longer. I believe it goes until 730. The rotation is there. It's not like it was. This is not a Christian County situation, but still, based on the structure of the storm, it could very easily wrap up and produce uh, a tornado again here north of Shelbyville, moving through the Lake Shelbyville area. Uh, probably between Shelbyville and Finlay would be the best guess here if it continues in that direction. Sometimes with these lines, though, you'll get a surge of wind here, and that then will cause more rotation and then just down the line, and, and so we will watch that pretty closely as we move on through. I want to check also some power outage numbers real fast, see if we've got any here. It looks like in Christian County, there's about... Uh, uh, 320 customers that are out of power and I'll check the the uh, other information see if we've got that a lot of those outages are in the Sharpsburg the Edinburgh area uh, the Edinburgh area I should say and um, then some there to the northeast of Taylorville the strongest damage by far the strongest point of the tornado looks to be uh, what it was between Kincaid, Bullpit, and Sharpsburg coming off of the lake area. And uh, so we will look for any information from those areas and we might see if Kevin can sneak back that direction. Um, I think it would have probably missed the campgrounds there at uh, the San Chris Lake State Park. I think so. I think it was more through the southern part of the lake. There's still uh, some rural areas and some rural access points that are out there, uh, but there's a number of homes there. In fact, probably close to 1930 North Road. Um, if Kevin can hear me, uh, that's going to be 600 East North 600 East Road, 1930 North Road. It's kind of at the South Fork of the Sangamon. If you're uh, sneaking west from Sharpsburg, where the road tees, you go north. That might be a spot to look for some more damage um, straight west of Sharpsburg, um, north of Kincaid there, if he's uh, still able to hear me. New severe thunderstorm warning now for Shelby and M Moultrie counties. That's going to be for the storm, that surge of wind at the south and east. I tend to think they're probably leaning towards not uh, an extension of the tornado warning at this point, uh, but it is still something we have to watch with strong wind potential, and I won't rule out a tornado uh, from that at any point, and so uh, we will be keeping you covered and keeping you updated here uh, for the next little bit. Seth, do you have any information to pass along? I don't have anything currently. Now, I know that this uh, I know this storm in Effingham County is about to pass over my, uh, my home down that yeah, direction, so yeah. we'll probably be ending up uh, seeing some pretty impressive hail down that direction at some point, and we'll see if I can get any reports from that. But this storm has just kind of been the same way the whole time. It's just kind of had some broad rotation aloft. And the good thing is it looks like this thing is kind of just well south of the area. Not really anything here for our viewing area to worry about for much longer as that looks to kind of pass more so into kind of the very southern edge of Jasper County there when it's all said and done. But a very slow mover. Probably getting some pretty steady rain there into that one. But uh, oh, there you go. There's a uh, cons Is that a considerable tag on that one now? That, that just red is extended. either considerable. It might be the tornado possible tag. It might be tornado possible. It is tornado possible. So still watching, you can kind of just see right in there that kind of broad rotation. Nothing has really jumped off the page yet, especially considering how high up into the uh, air that this uh, radar beam is looking at, but still enough going on to at least warrant uh, watching it. And what's unfortunate is we're going to have to do our best to see this one with the uh, St. Louis radar because I believe the Evansville one is not operational here. So this one's starting to enter some territory where it's <laughs> a bit of a radar hole and won't be very e easy to see. But as I said, on, on the bright side, kind of just skimming by to the south here, but we'll keep watching that one and see where it goes. Yeah, uh, 
getting some reports now from the Assumption area. Seth, we talked about that. Uh, there are trees and power lines down now in Assumption. There is damage in the city of Assumption. That would most likely be from the straight line winds if there was a tornado. I tend to think it would have been just north of town. Uh, but if your house has tree damage and whatnot, um, that's, a cons that's a problem. We, we, we really, you know, who cares if it's a, a tornado or, or wind damage? You've got property damage and you've got cleanup here. Uh, so we're really thinking of assumption at this point. Uh, so heads up to Kevin, there's some damage there. Also now some new information from emergency management in Sangamon County, two miles northeast of Pawnee. There is damage to a farmstead from a tornado. Uh, that would be kind of out in this area here between New City and Pawnee. I don't know if that's going to be the same tornado that continued, continued to the east. Uh, there were some reports of a tornado in that area. The National Weather Service, issued their tornado warning just east of there after some of those reports came on in. And uh, I think a lot of the damage is going to be from the San Cristin Lake area towards Sharpsburg and Kincaid. A lot of wind damage reported now in Assumption. And uh, that's a concern with that particular storm that moves to the south and to the east. All right, uh, here's what we're going to do, Seth. I want to stay with us just a little longer just to make sure. But uh, we've got no active tornado warnings. I am interested in the Tower Hill area. I'm also interested in the Henton area. This right here. Here, that surge snap of a finger could easily pick on up. Then down here towards Tower Hill, a lot of strong straight line winds coming into Shelbyville through Tower Hill and uh, along Illinois 16. The real beautiful, beautiful landscape down there if you've ever been on 16 between Pena and Shelbyville. The storm in Montgomery County here, that's going to be southeast of Nokomis, also could be uh, showing broad rotation, nothing imminent from it. That'd be an Oconee, Hanson, Cowden, Herrick issue, if so. Less concerned about that. Greater concern here now for central Shelby County for, at a minimum, straight line winds. And uh, those winds could be pretty impressive uh, before all is said and done. And uh, then the other thing is behind it, I was... My eye caught a little feature there by Raymond. I think that's a radar artifact. I don't think that's actually um, something that's there. Boy, man, that's just Southern Effingham County probably getting some big hail. There's probably some big hail from Mason to Watson on US 45. And the rotation's pretty uh, decent there, northwest of Blair um, and north of the uh, west of Mason, perhaps, in their stuff. So we'll watch that closely. Uh, National Weather Service still saying with uh, the tornado warning, the the storm maybe is coming a little more outflow dominant, and I tend to agree with that here, kind of looking at some of these other things behind the scenes. But they are going to um, keep an eye on the potential for some spin-ups along that and uh, if most interesting, perhaps, I think there's going to be a lot of wind coming through Tower Hill and Shelbyville. I'm going to stay with this through Shelbyville. There's a lot of that wind there. You check the velocity. Now, this is a little higher up, but uh, some of these, see, some of these radar pixels here um, suggesting 60 mile an hour wind plus possible uh, with those storms coming on through. And so uh, that's something that we'll, we'll continue to monitor here and, and move off to the east. Big picture here, uh, think up in Champaign County, maybe we get a little, little bit of light rain coming, but nothing significant. A little bit of shower activity on the I-72 corridor, I-74. At this point, I think we can give it all clear for Macon County, Pyatt County, Sangam. I don't think Pyatt County was in that tornado watch either. But Pyatt County, I think you're all good. Macon County, Sangamon County, and uh, then, of course, to the north and west towards Lincoln, Beardstown, Virginia, up towards uh, the Petersburg and Jacksonville area as we continue to watch this uh, these storms move on through. Next in line here is this storm moves through Shelby County is going to be southern cold. Cumberland County, of course, Effingham County now, and uh, we're still dealing with uh, the Shelby County problems, and that'll be where we continue to watch things there. That storm south of Effingham, uh, you just check the sky cam. It's just, the Effingham? yeah, all I can see is just rain out that just direction. Rain. It's just completely just blown up there on radar. There are plenty of just dark colors in there. It's it's impressive. I was going to say, it's kind of passing over home now, so hopefully they'll be able to kind of get an uh, on-the-ground view of kind of what's going on there, but at the moment, can all only uh, just kind of assume what's going on in there, but yeah, probably hail anywhere between one and two inches in there, and just buckets and buckets of rain. And you know, talked about the flash flood potential. That one's just such a slow moving storm. I'd be surprised, and I'm going to check here real quick. I don't think that one is moving hardly more than probably 20 miles an hour, just a little off to the southeast. And we'll take a look, and it is moving at 15 miles an hour. So definitely watching for some flash flooding there, and kind of rural Effingham County, kind of out there towards the south. Overall, this threat kind of looks like it's going to miss really a chunk of any kind of big 
population areas. But man, where you're seeing that rain, you're seeing a lot of it. It could get a little bit tricky there as that continues on. We're going to flip back over here to our reflectivity image and just kind of take a, a broad look here at what's going on. We're kind of in that uh, mode now where these storms have started to cluster up and sooner than later, we're going to have that damaging wind threat really be what's going on. And that's why you see those warnings so far out ahead of this kind of cluster of storms. Kind of sometimes that gust front kind of jumps out in front of the storms. I think this one's been doing a good job of kind of keeping with it there, but uh, still got the orange outlines on there. Still watching kind of some areas of rotation to potentially continue to monitor here. And we'll go ahead and pop up the uh, the velocity images there and can still just kind of see some broad areas there, especially kind of heading towards the uh, Herrick area there in kind of northern Shelby County, uh, just an area to watch there. But overall, it, it kind of looks like the, the tornado risk has kind of come down. We still kind of got those possible tags on it just to kind of watch and see what happens. But now all of a sudden the uh, focus is going to shift to those strong winds over the course of the next several hours. We'll kind of just watch as this one uh, eventually is going to get over there uh, at some point to the kind of Coles and Cumberland County areas there and we'll just have to watch um, kind of the uh, Mattoon Charleston area will kind of be on alert. This one might pass off just to your south just a little bit there. Looking at it, we'll get our sky cams up there in Coles County to see what's going on. But I agree, Jacob, here within the next, you know, 30 or so minutes, just kind of watching for that that kind of quick tornado potential there within some of these storms as you can kind of get some of those wrapped up around in there with just a, a sudden inflow there. But it looks like uh, it looks like effectively it's just going to be the wind threat for now. All right, thanks, Seth, for that report. Uh, we've got Kevin out there now. I believe Kevin's in the Sharpsburg area, uh, based on watching his camera. Kevin, uh, talk to us about some of the damage you're seeing now in Christian County. Yeah, more damage here coming. You're right. Uh, I'm just south of Sharpsburg right now. Uh, this home here has got a lot of trees uh, that are down, and it looks like partially the the roof, uh, some of the roof there, uh, coming some of the shingles. I don't know if they were possibly working on that, but uh, you can see there are tons of limbs that are down here. Again, this is going to be north or just south of Sharpsburg. I'm going to be turning uh, back to the north there towards Sharpsburg, and like you said, look for some of the damage. Damage, uh, that we've seen up there, but just within this one home that we're seeing here, man, I'm just kind of you know, looking around here. There are lots of trees snapped here, and uh, let's let's just kind of keep going along here and see what we see. But we're coming up here where we'll be uh, turning right into Sharpsburg here and see if we have any additional damage that's up here. You can see the sun is actually back out now. Um, so that's what we're looking at at this moment with uh, some damage here. So I'm going to reposition and then I'll get back to you guys here in just a second um, as we are finding damage here again uh, near Sharpsburg. And we're going to scoot to the north and see what else that we can see here. But uh, as a matter of fact, there's even a, you know, we'll show you that, I'll show you this here just real quick because listen, uh, we've had bad weather and severe weather, but. See out there in the distance about the rainbow that is uh, showing up here as well as the rain continues to kind of fall here. And as I mentioned, the sun is out, but uh, we're seeing a rainbow here again, just south of Sharpsburg. We're going to keep you updated with things and let you know what else we find here in the next few minutes. All right, thanks for that, Kevin. Just want to relay to you, we're going to keep your camera shot up as well. There's that rainbow. He's looking uh, back there. You know, nice shot after the storm for Christian County. Um, Kevin, we did get word from um, the deputy chief of Christian County Sheriff's Department. They have received reports of poles down and homes damaged west of Sharpsburg. There's more damage west of Sharpsburg where you are, are at. Uh, that's where the tornado was at its largest, and there's been a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of videos and pictures of that tornado that have come on through here. Uh, one of those is right, just had it here. Um, let me find it in my, my, my link here. Here we go. Here's, here's one of the videos I'll share for you real fast. Uh, this was one of the tornadoes that came on through. Again, this was towards the Sharpsburg area. Uh, very wrapped in rain, but if you look closely right in here, see that? That is the tornado. That's from uh, our friend Shea, uh, Shaza from Pena, and he's a uh, storm chaser out there. And so we've had a history of, of damage with this particular storm, and, and that's from the tornado. You can see all the power flashes from that as well. See that, Seth? 
that's that means there's, there's damage that has happened west of Sharpsburg from that uh, that storm. I think he was on 121, probably looking north there, based on, on knowing his location. So there's been damage to homes, and uh, we have not received any information on injuries yet. But again, that is damage uh, from that area, uh, thanks to some information that has come on in. As we also then go back to radar real quick here, um, that storm down by... Uh, down by uh, really the Oconee, that one catches my attention there. If you see this uh, yeah. right on the line, that's going to be southwestern Shelley County. Um, that's the one that in particular stands out to me as starting to show signs of strengthening. And it's in the spot where the boundary that these storms are riding is still, um, still able to pull in some of that uh, that spin and cause some problems like we've had here in uh, the Christian County area. So certainly we are are watching things and keeping an eye on it and uh, going to monitor things here for the next uh, couple of minutes. At this point, Shelbyville, the strong wind is upon you. That, that, that area of rotation does seem to be breaking apart a little bit, and that's some good news. Um, there, the, the wind threat, though, is clearly taking off on that and so it's likely Shelby will now getting some 60 mile per hour winds. That's been the forecast though, Seth. Tornado storms early on through three to seven o'clock and then after seven o'clock or so, we start to see them line up together and move to the south and east and that's what we've got going on here. And you and I have been watching these storms past couple of days and, and right on the money for the forecast. Still not done with the tornado threat though, are we, Seth? Correct, even when, you, you know, we've mentioned it before, even when you kind of get these linear structures, there's still times where they can kind of be embedded in there within the storms. Now, usually when that happens, it'll be a little bit more on the kind of brief end of things. But yeah, where the tornado threat's not quite over yet. We've still got that tornado watch out there for many areas until 10 p.m. And I do have to think that that one will probably last here as we go on into the night. But as you can just kind of see on velocity right now, we just kind of got some bright colors, not necessarily couplets anymore, but just strong bright colors indicative of pretty strong damaging winds there. Anywhere in the ballpark of probably 60, maybe even up to 70 miles an hour there in a couple of spots. But that's kind of just the way the storm mode is going to be here for the rest of the night. We'll see uh, how these storms continue to uh, progress and develop, but still watching features like that one you just mentioned, just kind of south of Oconee there. It's just something to keep in mind, kind of the Herrick and Cowden areas might want to watch because uh, this one's got a pretty intriguing structure to it as it kind of moves on to the east and gets ready to uh, head into the very southern portion of Shelby County there. Yeah, that's uh, going to be right north of Ramsey, uh, Herrick next in line, eventually Cowden, uh, pretty rural area, but then uh, down towards Beecher City, and then that one would be heading towards Effingham County, and so that's something that we want to watch pretty closely there, and so uh, we were, that to me is the storm to watch, and based on what has happened today, um, that is probably got a good shot at doing something here before long, so we're going to watch that. Um, the Effingham County storm, are you seeing much rotation on our side of the county line, or is it, it, it kind of seems like it's maybe surging a little more south and east, is that correct? It's still kind of, yeah, just kind of starting to shift a little bit more to the south. I'll go ahead and put this in motion here just to kind of see what it's been doing over the course of the last hour, but yeah, it's kind of just starting to tail a little bit there to the south. Lots of heavy rain still in it, but kind of the rotation is enough to kind of keep that possible tag on it, but I haven't seen anything that would make me think that the threat is more imminent than it's ever been. But as, as I mentioned earlier, we're kind of getting to that point where we're getting far enough away from both the Lincoln and St. Louis radar to where we're just kind of going to be in a radar hole here for a little bit because the uh, one out there by Evansville is not operational here. So kind of just a dark zone as that one moves on to the east. But luckily at the moment, just looks like a lot of heavy uh, beneficial rain. Hopefully not too much down that direction, but looks like the hail is starting to subside just a little bit. The core kind of uh, not quite as strong as what it once looked. But of course, we're looking way up high here into the the core of this storm so can't really give an accurate estimation of what's going there on at the ground right now but just kind of broad rotation i did have someone message me that kind of did see some kind of what they called cone structure around Diedrich. they didn't say it was rotating or anything though just kind of those uh kind of that structure within some of these cells sometimes kind of just the scud on the base of some of these storms kind of just something to expect here with this one but mainly just kind of a hail threat there with that and uh i don't know that latest scan now kind of makes that uh storm on the very southern appendage of this big cluster, that one in the very southern part of Shelby County. That one's starting to look better here with each scan. I'm going to go ahead and toss things onto our velocity image here, and it's starting to, it's starting to get a little better looking there. Still not the, uh, the brightest colors that you uh, kind of ring the alarm for and say that this is definitely heading that way, but we've kind of just seen within the last couple of scans, let's we'll kind of back things up here. It went from really broad right there, kind of some dark green and some dark red, and as it's gotten a little closer to 51 there, things have started to tighten up just a 
little bit. So an area of interest here probably in the next uh, 10 to 20 minutes to keep track of. And this is probably the area that you'll see any kind of potential tornado threat through the rest of the night. It's just kind of here on the southern flank of these storms where it's not really battling anything to its south. It can just kind of ingest all that unstable air and kind of continue to make things happen as it uh, as it continues along. Whereas the, some of those storms up in the north have kind of seen what's been happening with those kind of just starting to be a little bit more on the gustier side of things as, as far as as opposed to uh, being more on the rotational side of things. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and put mine full screen real fast and just look at this picture that came out again. This is from Storm Chaser Shea. Kevin's heading to the area where this tornado was spotted and uh, we're getting more reports from the Christian County Sheriff's Office of Damage uh, and the fire department heading out there. It's maybe hard to see. There we go. You zoom in. You look right in the center of the screen. You'll see my big cursor there kind of circle it. That was a sizable tornado that tore through western parts of Christian County and uh, is continuing its track to the east. It may have been down for 15 or more miles based on damage. We know there is damage in Sangamon County. Uh, I've been texting with Theodora Culavares. She's also checking in with officials there as we've got these storms carrying to the south and to the east. I think that's going to be our plan. So we will stay here until 8 o'clock on TV. And so about 7.57 or so, we'll wrap things up as long as things progress in this general direction. We will keep our digital coverage going, though, um, as we watch uh, these storms continue to the south and east. I know some folks that are in, in Cumberland County, Coles County, I think County, they're saying, don't leave us. We will stay with you, but we will continue on digital platforms. That'll give you a few minutes. You can download the WCI3 news and weather apps. You can stream our digital coverage there. You can go to Facebook. Any of our meteorologist pages have this uh, coverage on there. Kevin's, Seth's, mine, even Adam's. Uh, you can catch us on your favorite uh, at-home programming method, whether it's YouTube TV or things of that uh, as we keep things uh, updated. And then Kevin there is continuing his track to the west. Uh, if Kevin can hear me, the report we got was that 1800 North Road area towards the uh, Sharpsburg, uh, west of Sharpsburg, where there's been some damage to homes and power lines. And I would suggest that be north of Kincaid, um, kind of in that, that curve area. You get to the T. I think that's where he's probably heading based on looking at his has this thing there. So, so Kevin, you can hear us now, and uh, you're heading to the other area. We've got Theodore giving us damage updates and more, uh, and as soon as we want to, he's back there. Kevin, give us an update on where you are, recap us on some of the damage, and then uh, talk to us about what you, I think, uh, you'll see here moving forth. Yeah, you are right. I am on 1800 North Road here, uh, going to be just southwest of Sharpsburg. So I think we're going to be uh, coming up upon where possibly uh, some of that uh, damage that you were uh, just talking about is. Uh, uh, possibly we've heard some trees, power lines, uh, home damage here as well. Um, again, we're just rolling up on this here. I, I, I've got a couple of tree limbs here down on the left and right side. Um, the uh, this is the let's see Bobo Lou Hereford Farm is, is is the sign that we're seeing. Okay, here we go. Um, here's a pretty large tree here that uh, is down, as you can see. And so uh, that that's one there. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep kind of going down uh, 1800 North, but uh, obviously you can see uh, some of the damage here. Pretty large tree uh, that is down. And again, you can also still still see that rainbow that is over there as well. So here we go. I'm going to just kind of peel back around and we're going to keep going on 1800 North because I have a feeling the damage is going to be even more as we go down this hill and then back up here on the top. Uh, see the power lines that are by left. I will say this. Um, actually, whoa, there's one that snapped. Uh, looks like. Um, I will say this. When we were showing you that, oh, okay, there we go. I think there, I think this is, uh, well, I'm going to have to double back around, but you can almost kind of see maybe some uh, some crop damage here. Um, and I think when we get up on this hill, we're going to see even more. Uh, but several trees here. This is absolutely uh, seeing uh, debris here up in the power lines. Uh, we're going to be just kind of careful here as we creep through, and you're going to see lots of of limbs that are down here. Um, I can see some damage to a house here on my left. Lots of roof damage here. Bad wolf pottery. Um, this is uh, this is absolutely where we've had a, a tornado uh, that uh, has passed through. Uh, power lines are down here. It looks like uh, the sheriff is over here as well. I'm gonna 
let these cars kind of pass by and then uh, probably have a pretty good view possibly of some flattened um, crops over here and I'm just gonna come in here see if we can see anything yeah a lot of trees kind of blocking uh, blocking the view here I'll tell you what I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to get to my best position here in a second and then uh, I'll jump back here with you because again we're literally just coming up on scene of this and assessing things right now um, there seems to be a couple of houses over here where there, there has definitely been some uh, some damage to this area so um, these are you can see here's the power lines here are the power lines that are down um, over here on the left and just everywhere I look quite a few trees and just look at the crop there uh, that uh, definitely uh, where the tornado came through and has flattened um, a lot of that so this is exactly where a tornado did pass through more of the trees here you can see the top uh, parts of the trees uh, that have been clipped off a lot of roof damage here shingles and whatnot and again we're just seeing a lot of activity here looks like possibly another power pole that was snapped um, oh here's a pretty large tree again the crops over here just flattened and then so there's a wow these are these are some very large trees uh, that are down so again oh here give me one second I'm gonna turn to the turn back here and you're gonna see a row of power lines that are down so as you can see there all right so there you go mm -hmm. so this is what we're looking at here guys a lot of damage here exactly where a tornado passed through all right, Kevin, real quick, we're going to stay with you and come back to you here in a second, but I do want to update real quick uh, some of the damage, of course, in Christian and Sangamon County. Uh, there's reports that are coming on in, still getting information, and Kevin is now west of Sharpsburg. For your information, Kevin, if you keep going to the west, the road hits a T. I think you'll see more damage when you take a right and go north as well, but you're looking there at uh, power lines that are down on the right side of your screen. Some significant damage reports in the Christian County area, and Kevin's just getting on scene of that. On here on the left side, I want to point some Something out. I'm starting to grow concerned about tornado potential now east of Shelbyville towards Strasburg and Windsor and uh, off towards uh, areas between Mattoon and uh, Jewett and Greenup. What's happening here is we're seeing the surge of wind really start to organize and push to the south and east. A lot of strong wind now coming for Strasburg. As that happens, this mass here is kind of lifting to the north. That may very well allow for in the next 10 to 15 minutes another uh, circulation to spin up. The other thing is here comes the surge of wind wind. These storms here are lifting to the north and we may have to really watch closely there southeastern Shelby County into Cumberland County and uh, beyond. So we'll watch that here. Uh, Kevin is uh, getting in position there on the right side of your screen. I know it's the second when he gets that shot. Uh, he's going to uh, bring that back to us. I am suspicious as well. This looks like new utility pools and knowing that area. I wonder if maybe the derecho came through that area and caused damage as well. That's, that's, that's a little south of Springfield, but boy, a couple months ago, Springfield was hit hard, Seth, wasn't it? Yeah, just, yeah, it felt like Springfield was kind of a spot that anytime there was severe weather, they were getting it, because, I mean... <laughs> and Chatham. There's the places, yeah, Chatham. Chatham's gotten two-plus-inch hail probably five or six times here this season, but, yeah, uh, there's a lot of places that got hit by that derecho back uh, about about two months ago, and uh, it caused a little bit of uh, caused a little bit of a stir down that direction, and lots of damage, lots of power outages, especially over there in Springfield, so kind of new, new, uh, new infrastructure being put down there as far as the power lines go, and kind of being put to the test here again with today. Today's uh, round of showers and storms. Just kind of uh, adding on to what you've been saying about these storms here. I'm also kind of watching that one on the kind of the southern flank. We might get a decent view of this one from the Effingham cam before Ooh, yeah. too long. I can get a little bit of a base in the distance. There's not high contrast to it, but kind, kind of, of uh, something, yeah. kind of entering the. It will be entering the northwest portion of Effingham County here soon, but right now on the northeast side of the uh, Fayette County area, kind of just looking in the uh, Loudoun area, kind of south of Cowden. This will be an area to watch. Beecher City there, of course, as well. So Effingham County, you've got a lot of noise to your south, but you definitely need to uh, keep your eyes to the north here as this uh, the southern flank of this uh, line of storms is starting to look like it's got a little bit of its own kind of motion to it here at the moment. Yeah, all of that still. I'm not, uh, I'm not, um What's the terminology? I don't think we're done yet. No, I'll yeah. say that. Uh, and, and this here might be a Neoga issue, uh, potentially down the line. Uh, no warning, it's a tornado watch with a severe thunderstorm warning and what's called a tornado possible tag for Shelby County. But just seeing how things have evolved, sometimes we have these storms that merge together. And I tell you what, I really think Chatham and Springfield got really lucky that that storm didn't organize earlier. Uh, we had some storms kind of move into it. 
And then once it got there towards the Pawnee area, you had a storm merge in and it really helped it to rotate and spin. And that's been the case here with the uh, Windsor Sharpsburg, where uh, Strasburg, I should say, where another storm wrapping in and timing out right where those familiar signs of what may evolve if uh, all the cards are right. And just to show you here, I'll loop this the last 30 minutes. These storms here kind of building out in front of it and this is surging around. Sometimes that can allow for some rotation. Again, I don't think anything's imminent in the next you know two minutes but uh, certainly the potential is there for southern coals and into cumberland county that that may be something worth watching we have that camera in matt Toon also let's don't forget that one also i think the matt Toon one unfortunately went offline oh, did earlier it? today so i don't think we have that we do have the charleston one but not charleston quite, one faces north yeah, not yeah. quite as helpful with that one yeah so uh effingham you got that camera up on you i do computer? uh right now i'm kind of seeing a pretty nice uh, shelf cloud let me get that yeah, go ahead and uh, my, uh, pull that in. and then once we do this we're gonna go to kevin in a second i think here so uh, but uh go ahead and, this is what we're seeing right now kind of that that segment to that line segment of storms you can really see a pretty nice view of from atop the uh, St. Anthony Hospital here in Effingham this is looking off to the north northwest here at the moment I'll just kind of move things slowly off to the west you can just see kind of that nice broad shelf cloud as these storms kind of have nice little amount of wind to them now we are going to watch kind of the southern end of this uh, of this shelf cloud though I'm kind of watching that side that's kind of where again that southern tip of that uh, line segment is where it kind of looks like there's a little bit of rotation so we're going to kind of be looking off here to the west northwest for a little bit um jacob do we have anything new on your end yeah let's go ahead and go out to kevin if we can because uh, we're really starting to see some of that significant damage in that area and i know he was talking to some homeowners he was there on 1800 north road west of uh, uh sharpsburg and we're looking at the video at the same time you are here this uh um, extended coverage of a significant tornado strike in christian county tonight and uh, kevin is out there kevin if you can hear us i'd like to know where you're at what you're seeing and uh tell us a little about what some of the the folks in the area are saying to you sure yeah yeah so uh, we are here at 1800 and i think this is 900 east um can't quite exactly see the sign there uh but pretty close to that um you can see the several of the trees that um are down at this home as you can see i mean just look at this stump here as well i was told that also that this same area was hit this was the, the last, so some of this was from the last storm um, that as the storms that came through. This area got hit, what, what a couple weeks ago, was it then? Or, how, or when that was? Uh, the last big storm that they had, I, a lot of people keep telling me that they, you know, this area got hit. Actually, all of these lines, these poles that you see here, they're brand new. Uh, they just put these things up not too long ago in the same area because uh, they were damaged before. And you can you can just kind of see just how new they are with the color of them. And so this area hit pretty hard. Uh, you can see here's the power line uh, that is down um, across the road. And as I kind of swing over here, uh, you're going to see more of those power lines that um, have snapped. And then there are more poles along here that that are down again you can see that some of the crop damage here kind of flattened uh, pretty good as well um, as this is the path of where a tornado uh, did come through so we're still kind of just assessing things here but we are again southwest of sharpsburg and uh, a lot of damage here once again all right kevin have you talked to the is there a homeowner there anyone do you have any information for us quickly at all uh, not yet. Um, but this gentleman here, he um, is actually from Edinburgh, and he, he uh, just came over here. He actually said he was a, a, a line, power lineman for 30 years, and so uh, he kind of figured this might be the, the location of where we had some damage, and he's right. Again, you can see there off in the distance, again, there's another Matthew. rainbow. I'm going to go over and maybe try to talk to some of the homeowners, but uh, again, guys, we'll keep you updated on anything else that we see. All right, Kevin, uh, thanks for that report. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stay on coverage here because I'm seeing signs now of increasing rotation, as we had talked about now, east of Strasburg, um, starting to come together. See these bright colors in here? This is going to be moving towards Nioga and towards Lake Matt Tomb. At this point, it does not look like a tornado is imminent, but we are moving in stair steps in the right direction here. And uh, so while Kevin's getting set, um, we'll just kind of check back on him. Starting to get a little more concerned here for uh, I-57 between Mattoon and Effingham with that particular storm. As uh, you look here, and you kind of zoom it out, some of those colors starting to come together in a couple of different spots. First off, uh, Windsor as well. Would not rule out that area. Um, also east of Strasburg. Here's the deal, though. See how it's all wrapped up in rain uh, your best bet is going to be right here in Strasburg area and they just issued a new severe thunderstorm warning continuing to the east into parts of Cumberland 
and uh, Coles County, as well as uh, into Effingham County for this line. It has the tornado possible tag. Uh, let's see if the new velocity at all um, shows any better what I'm thinking. First off, I think Strasburg and winds are in getting a big old windstorm right now. We'll take a look at some of these pixels. It's probably estimating 60 to, um, let me just hide that. And I'm gonna do that pixel again. Never works when you want it to, does it? Uh, I'll just have to leave that box up and check it internally here on, on radar. Uh, radar is estimating some 60 plus mile per hour winds in the Windsor and Strasburg area. And this feature right here is probably one worth watching. When you look at where it is, it's right in that little kink there. So we're seeing inflows starting to increase now. Uh, probably a safe option if you're in Neoga and Lake Mattoon, Lake Paradise, it might be worth it to just head to a shelter. Uh, the storm's coming on in. At, at the worst, um, you know, you get a little wind and, and things look okay. Um, you know, that might be, be the best case scenario. At the worst, though, this could be the start of uh, something starting to develop here. And uh, I, I think know. I do have a brief view of that from the Effingham camera. Yeah, go ahead and pull up. See. Let's pull uh, Max. Yeah. Let me get that sky cam pulled up here on my show. I think we got a little bit of a lowering. It doesn't look like much yet, but I do think this is just barely looking to the west of north there towards uh, towards that kind of Neoga area. So that's kind of just a little bit of a lowering that I've noticed. Um, there's nothing between this camera and that particular area yeah. of there. So it looks like we're kind of looking that direction anyway. It looks, again, there's a little bit of a lowering, nothing too crazy that's jumping off the page just yet, but we've kind of been trending that direction just a little bit, just kind of slowly watching to see if this uh, does anything here within the next few minutes, because it does definitely look like things have uh, started to head a little bit more that direction with that storm. Again, just kind of around the Strasburg area here right now on its way kind of north of Neoga here. So we'll just kind of watch things from atop the uh, from atop the Effingham camera. Probably our best shot at looking at some of these storms here for a while because without the uh, Coles County cams, can't really see too much going on in there here at the moment. Yeah, so really Windsor and Strasburg, a lot of wind and I think the tornado potential is slowly rising in those areas. Um, you're gonna, we're starting to hit nighttime as well, but from radar, I really think uh, Windsor, uh, the Illinois 32, Illinois 16 corridor where they come together. There may be something developing in there. Uh, we've got this really intense area of motion heading south of these. We've got this motion wrapping in here. And so we really could see something develop here before long based on those early signs. And the boundary, there's a boundary. And a lot of times those can be pulled in by storms and they increase the intensity, really help rotation to increase, is being pulled right into this area. So I just want to stay on this a little longer. Um, we will, if we, if we see some changes in the right direction, then we'll toss back to our, our, our regular programming here in a second. Um, but I'm really concerned now for Eastern Shelby County and I would really be watching Mattoon Charleston, Lake Paradise, Lake Mattoon, Neoga, uh, probably next in line here. And those areas, um, even like Gaze points to the south, might be worth monitoring for just a few more minutes. Uh, uh, other storms, it, not getting that good of a look. I think Effingham County from that big old massive storms, it's turning into more of a Jasper Crawford County issue, but there was some golf ball size hail in Edgewood reported, and there's been a measured uh, estimated 60 mile per hour winds there um, in the Mason area, and they've also had some hail in Altamont, uh, quarter sized hail there. Are you seeing what I'm seeing when it comes to this here, Seth, th this storm? Yeah, I would have to agree. It's definitely something that uh, definitely warrants sticking around here for a little bit just to kind of see what is going to uh, go down here with this because, uh, yeah, it's just kind of got the, uh, you know, we've been seeing kind of clues that ended up leading to tornado warnings all night long, and we're kind of starting to see that up here this direction right now as it kind of gets ready to move across uh, 57 there, kind of watching uh, southern Coles County area. Still just kind of a lot of uh, kind of a shelfy look here from Effingham. I can't really make out anything too significant here, but if we are going to be able to see it, we'll be able to see it from this cam just because there shouldn't be anything between where we are here in Effingham looking there to the north at the moment. And uh, like you said, daylight is uh, kind of starting to run a little bit thin here. Sunset's close to 8 o'clock these days, so you know, only be able to see on the sky cams for too much longer until we're going to have to rely on some lightning there to kind of illuminate things and keep an eye on everything from our sky cam network anyway. Yeah, kind of looking up, there's definitely some strong mid-level rotation in a couple of spots. One near Windsor, one east of Strasburg, and one to the west of Neoga. Um, at the surface, though, it's not as impressive, but 
when you get that mid-level rotation, oftentimes you see it at the mid-level and it will stretch its way down towards the ground. And so I just want to stay here for a few more minutes. And, and I realize some folks are thinking, hey, I'm, you're inconvenienced by that. I want to watch my TV programming. You know, we got an obligation to give our, our coverage to folks that are in the path of these storms. Um, and we will continue to do that here. Uh, these storms had a history of significant damage from tornadoes and uh, from wind as well. And it looks like Kevin on the top right of the screen, he's there kind of uh, close to the uh, west of Sharpsburg is on some more damage here and he's going to be kind of moving in to give us an up close view in that. So if needed, Kevin, just let us know and we'll check in with you here. Um, if you're watching at home and you haven't downloaded the app yet, go ahead and do that because I think we'll probably here in a couple of minutes, if this continues to, to kind of hold its own, we'll be a phone call away from jumping back on TV and we'll go back to the regular program, but we'll stay on digital coverage here for a little uh, while longer until we can get these storms out of the area. Uh, so right now the time is 8.04 and uh, real, real concern now for Eastern Shelby County and into parts of Coles and Cumberland County. Mattoon Charleston South is where the problems will be, particularly in the Neoga area right now. As I just kind of look at things, I'm seeing those initial signs of rotations starting to increase very close to Neoga um, as we are. And in fact, I just got a, a report of a large wall cloud now, Neoga, uh, that just coming on in. I mean, that came in moments ago. Very ominous looking situation with uh, that. And let me go ahead and just pop that photo on for you here. Uh, the concern now growing for Neoga, Lake Mattoon, Lake Paradise, and... Um, surrounding areas. I think I've got this to where it will pop up and work right there. It is now. Let me turn it sideways to make it full screen more. Um, what we're looking at here is this is the area of rotation that's starting to show here up at the surface. Now he's near to yoga looking off to the north. The storm is almost wrapped in there. So it's wrapped up back in the rain. There's only a narrow little slice of the view that you can see it from like this. Other areas are going to be just stuck in the rain. Um, but certainly concern there for Neoga, Lake Mattoon, Lake Paradise, and uh, places like that is something that's uh, uh, growing a little bit. So I wanted to share that photo as we continue to watch these storms move into parts of Cumberland and Coles County. Did get a new severe thunderstorm warning, McCoop and Montgomery. Those storms further to the west there, they move it south and east and be out of our way. And probably what these storms are doing at this point, uh, if we don't get any more tornadoes out of this, Seth, uh, they're going to be kind of accelerating together and, and become a big windbag moving down to the south and east towards Greenup, Newton, and Robinson. I'd say that's probably the most likely scenario here. And uh, we're only an hour or two away from getting out of coverage, I'd say, with uh, these particular storms. So uh, that is, uh, you know, good news. We're, we're on the tail end swing of things, but uh, still some concern there. In fact, that latest update, um, trying to get my, my other radar here. Neoga, west of Neoga, a couple miles, the Trowbridge area. Man, that wind is really blowing on through. I just got a friend living in Neoga said the sirens are going off there in Neoga right now. Sirens are going off in Neoga. I tell you what, I'm not surprised by that. Um, and um, let's see here. Um, you're in the Effingham looking to the north. Um, somebody saying the wind, calm in Windsor, raining hard and lightning right now. And, you know, I'm not surprised. We're gonna be here for Neoga. I am, I am a little concerned. It'll be Neoga, maybe a little bit to the north. And as I check here, I'm just kind of checking some other products in the side. You know, that's, that's the spot, really. Neoga, north there along the county line where something could spin. And the wind is gonna be a problem as well here. We've got some, some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds coming in through Neoga out of Strasbourg and uh, in, in that area. So the next couple of radar scans are gonna be very trivial to tell us what's happening. I would say this, down towards Stewartson, would you kind of see this? It almost seems like it's, it's breaking apart a little bit. I mean, it's seems more cluster, but this might be trying to break away and do something. Wouldn't you say that, Seth? Yeah, it certainly looks like that's kind of the direction that it's heading there. Um, yeah, absolutely. On the latest scans, that is something to uh, something to acknowledge and something to track as it uh, as it kind of gets ready to do its own thing here as it kind of passes on through to Neoga now becoming a Cumberland and far southern Coles County issue here. We're going to be watching places like Toledo here 
the next several minutes just on the north side of there. We'll see how this uh, progresses here. But yes, things are starting to really start to trend that direction anyway. Still not able to see too much going on here on the Effingham cam. It just looks like a lot of kind of shelfiness to it. And I, I don't think, unfortunately, we'll be able to see much here from at atop the uh, hospital cam uh, at the moment as things are just looking like they're going to about to get a little too dark here to see much. Yeah, so uh, one thing I want to mention is, well, at this point, we don't have a tornado warning in the New York area. There is that tornado possible tag, and we think there's some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. Uh, and based on what we're seeing on radar, something may be there. Nighttime is working against us, and rain wrap is working against us, where this storm is wrapping up. The sirens are going off in Neoga at this point. Uh, we've confirmed that from a couple of sources. And uh, what we think might be happening here is um, this coming together very close to the Neoga area, crossing Illinois 121 and uh, US 45 in Cumberland County. And, uh, you know, that northern spot, not as much of a concern. I really think here this is going to be more of the issue. And let me just uh, real quick, I'm going to sample those pixels that are there west of town. Um, I'm going to see if that works like I hope it does. It's probably going to pull up the information. Um, those bright pixels, though, I can see behind the scenes here that the... Uh, let me get that um, adjusted real quick. This is not being my friend tonight here. Um, that's what I want to hide. Oh, I got something here, Jacob. I got 70 miles an hour. When 70 I mile an hour? Yep. Yeah, mine keeps uh, wanting to plot the warning. There it is, some 67 mile an hour, so 70 mile an hour winds in there. And is that what they're warning it for as well, perhaps? It looks, uh, let me double check on that and see, they've got it, still just says 60 right now on still mine. Still 60. Yeah, we'll see what happens here uh, before long. But uh, concern now in Neoga, a big windstorm coming through. That's going to eventually move down 121 towards Toledo and Greenup. And if we can get this out of here, the quicker the better. Uh, should be some still some fairly decent wind in Strasburg and Stewardson. Uh, check out power outage numbers here as well. Um, power outage numbers have climbed a little bit. We now have some outages in Effingham County. There's uh, nearly 1,000 customers in Christian County offline, and uh, we'll continue to see them grow a little bit. Uh, can we at all talk to Kevin? Is Kevin able to hear us? Uh, I know he's walking through some of the damaged areas in Christian County. Um, Kevin, tell us a little bit about what you're seeing here. Hey, yeah, guys. Um, I, I, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can I hear you just fine. I think you can. I'm just coming up on some of this, uh, some of this damage here. Um, just kind of walking along here. The police have uh, blocked off the roads, so I can't actually... Um, I had to have, get out and get on foot and try to get some of this damage here as you can see and so there is a home that is over here pretty large uh, trees that are kind of snapped all through this area and it looks like some uh, siding on that house there uh, with some of that damage and again it's pretty much everywhere you look out here I mean it does look like it was you know a lower end tornado I'm not seeing just mass devastation or you know homes that are leveled or anything but uh, definitely um, probably a lower end tornado that, that came through, clipping a lot of the trees and whatnot through this area. Uh, but again, like you said, now we're starting to get some of that darkness that is settling in. Um, but this area here, southwest of Sharpsburg, definitely had some of that damage. And again, power lines down all along this stretch of road on 1800 North. You can see some of the other uh, homes here, uh, a lot of the trees and, and like I said, the power lines down um, in this general area. So that's kind of what we're looking at here right now. Um, and again, darkness coming, so won't be able to see a whole lot here before too long, uh, but definitely you can hear the sound of generators. Uh, I don't think that they have power, obviously, and some of these spots where I'm hearing generators, I'm hearing chainsaws, the normal sound. And again, you can see there's another home that uh, has some roof damage to it as well so that's what we got here from southwest of sharpsburg because we're, we're we're on foot right now just uh making our way around to find some of the damage all right thanks for that report kevin and as darkness falls we'll probably uh you know we'll probably uh see if you can can uh, probably start heading back this way because uh, you're not going to see much more, but we know there's some damage all the way back from Pawnee. So this could have been on the ground for a while. And National Weather Service, as Kevin was mentioning, where he is seeing lighter end of damage. Uh, I know uh, in some areas that damage probably a little bit more impressive, but they will survey that, and we should have a report from them probably at some point tomorrow afternoon on this storm. Neoga area right now looks like the core of wind is upon you. And uh, I think what we're going to do is, as far as tornado potential here, it just doesn't seem to be getting its act together and uh 
you know, that boundary keeps pushing ahead. So what we'll do in the back is uh, 8.15 if or so, just in the next couple of minutes, give me a time and we'll toss it back to regularly scheduled program here. Uh, and then we'll have more news coverage coming up at 9 and 10 with Seth in the studio. And if needed, we will be uh, back on TV. We will stay on digital platforms, though, with this situation as it continues to evolve. Probably some big hail also there in the uh, Lake Paradise, Mattoon area, Lakeland College, or at least it's trending upwards, perhaps. Uh, not showing much now, but kind of those first signs, something uh, heavier going on there as uh, these storms continue to work to the south and east. So at this point, a lot of us are clear for the night. Christian County's done. Moultrie County, almost done. Just the Gaze area. Shelby County, almost done. We're just east of Shelby. Weather. 816. Cool. Thank you. Um, those areas will be uh, still um, facing things. And we're going to just keep our digital coverage right on the app, on Facebook and whatnot, uh, and continue to bring you updates as, as we get information from areas that have damage and whatnot. So that's the, the latest on, on what we'll do. We'll do a quick radar reset here. I'm meteorologist Jacob Dickey. We've got uh, meteorologist Seth Bonhoff in the studio. And then we've got chief meteorologist Kevin Lighty in the storm tracker here tonight. You'll see most of the activity now down towards the Effingham area, the Cumberland County, Southern Coles County. We are not leaving you alone. We will be here for you on digital platforms. Uh, so far, things have been right there, and we're hoping that trend holds, and that means we don't have to jump back on TV. But if there is a tornado warning, we'll be right back on TV, as that's the most effective way to reach our audience when it comes to severe weather, as we've heard time and time again. And we will continue to give severe weather coverage when we it's warranted, such as on a night tonight. Uh, Neoga's probably getting a good old windbag in there. And... Um, We'll continue to see uh, Sullivan. There's some power outages in that area, so we'll probably see those numbers uh, trick on up. So about a minute out from Toss TV Active Coverage here. If you haven't yet, join us on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Twitter, or X as they call it now. Uh, we will continue our coverage on the uh, digital platforms. We'll return to regularly scheduled programming. Of course, you'll see the boxes right here, bottom of your screen. Uh, that's going to be where uh, we get the information as well, so we'll have that. Thanks for joining us. Oh, we want to go to Kevin real quick. Is that possible? Yes. Go to Kevin. Hey Kevin. guys, um, yeah, we're back out here, and um, you live in this home behind. We were showing pictures of it, and the storm came Hang through. In. Tell us, uh, tell us what you saw. I, I, um, I saw that there was a tornado on the ground near Pawnee, so I grabbed the dog and we headed to the basement for the uh, tornado room, and just it started to get a little windy and loud so I uh, just hunkered down and I have really sensitive ears so I could feel it in my ears and it was loud it was howling and it was really scary and then I just waited until it quieted down to get out and see what had happened and then I realized water was coming down through the house and when I came outside the roof was gone so what kind of damage do you have? A lot. There's water everywhere. I have, I have hardwood floors through the full first floor. So there's water standing on the floor. It's seeped down into the shop. It's bad. And, and you own, you are owner of the Bad Wolf Pottery. Right? That's, that's, that's yeah. where we're located here. Right. Yeah, so just super loud. Storm came through. And uh, you, you and your dog there, everybody yeah. okay? We're okay, yeah, just a little freaked out. A little freaked out. But, yeah. So. Well, I, I wish you the best here. Sorry we had to meet on these circumstances, but uh, uh, I know that you guys also got hit like five weeks ago we by did. a storm as well. We this say, this same area right. seems to uh, kind of be a magnet for storms. I know, my brother thinks I'm the magnet. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I don't know, it's so, I, and I actually thought before the storm hit, what are the odds? that it would hit again in the same place, but apparently pretty good. Apparently pretty good, yeah. yeah. Maybe you should go buy a lottery ticket. I know, or something. <laughs> I'm gonna need it to pay for the house. You are, you are indeed. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for chatting with us. Um, I appreciate it. And um, we're, we're gonna walk up here just a little bit and okay. get some pictures. Thank, could you say and spell your name for me again? My name is Michelle Cokes, and my last name is C-O-A-K-E-S. Okay, And Perfect. thankfully my neighbors, the Taylors came to rescue me 
help me because my brain is not working. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad. See, Everybody's good neighbors coming by here, helping out. I know it's all what the community's about. I appreciate you guys. Stay safe, and uh, hopefully you don't get hit by another storm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm just going to keep walking up here, guys, and just stay with me here for a second because we'll have a better uh, view of the home. So, she lives in the home up here. And I guess she runs some kind of a, a pottery business here, but she says that the roof is obviously uh, badly damaged and water was coming in. And you can kind of see that as we're coming up. And I know it's getting kind of dark and uh, you guys are barely going to be able to kind of see things. But uh, just to kind of give you an idea, you can kind of see the, uh, the roof damage here that we've got as the storm came through. Uh, a lot of trees that are down up here as well. But as I mentioned before, we're not seeing homes that are just leveled. I mean, this home is, you know, generally in, you know, decent condition compared to what it could have been. But you can definitely see some uh, holes up there in the roof. All right, guys. So this is what we're working with here. Lots of damage up here south and west of Sharpsburg. So uh, Jacob will uh, send it back to you as, again, we're just kind of, walking along here and seeing what we can find in terms of uh, damage and whatnot. All right, thanks so much for that, Kevin. At this point, we are going to toss back to regularly scheduled programming on CBS. We will stay on digital platforms and continue to watch Cumberland County closely and Effingham County as well as these storms move on through. Last thoughts, Shelby County is in the clear. Mattoon Charleston points to the north is in the clear, and uh, they have dropped some of that tornado watch as well. You can see the remaining counties here on the bottom of your screen. I'm meteorologist Jacob Dickey with live team coverage for you here of severe weather tonight. Join us on digital platforms for a continuing coverage here as storms continue to move through the area. Have a great night.